With Stefanski out, there are two keys for Cleveland to have a chance to win Sunday, says ESPN's Jeff Saturday. The one thing you got to do is, if you're the Browns, is run the football, right? Go back to run the ball because Stefanski and Mayfield, uh, Stefanski has brought the best out of him, but you're going to have to run it. And then I would flip it over and say defensively, you're going to have to pressure Ben Roethlisberger. Look, at, at, at the end of the day, you're going to have to make him uncomfortable. Special teams coordinator Mike Creeper will serve as Brown's acting head coach. Washington coach Ron Rivera says he's mulling rotating quarterbacks Alex Smith and Taylor Heineke for Saturday's playoff game against the Buccaneers. Smith still dealing with a strained calf, which limited his mobility in the win over the Eagles Sunday. A reminder that you can catch the live announcement of the Heisman Trophy winner tonight at 7 Eastern on ESPN Radio, ESPN TV, and the ESPN app. Look, we all accidentally damage our phones. It happens. Now, Straight Talk Wireless's new Platinum Unlimited plan includes phone protection. Just 65 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, data, and more. See mobile protect terms and conditions at assurian.com slash straight talk. Limitations and exclusions apply. Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 and Ajaran Levine Studios. This is Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690 with Brent Martineau and Austin Lane. Well, do you still have Urban Meyer fever or what? Maybe you never had it. Arthur Smith, Robert Sala, Raheem Morris, Eric Bieniemy. Some of the reports being thrown around. Jaguars have requested interviews with. What about general manager wise? We've heard Jerry Reese's name and Rick Smith and Trent Balky's already in the building. Lewis Riddick's name's been thrown around today. Ray Farmer former Cleveland Brown GM. So a lot of names on the list. A wide net has been cast. We are going to continue to hear a lot of these names mentioned, I would believe. But remember, there's a market for this. There's competition for this because there are six jobs available. In fact, seven GM jobs because of the Denver Broncos. Uh, so we will see how it unfolds. But sooner the better if you want the top man, whoever that might be. Brent Martineau. Here at home once again, and Austin Lane in the Action Sports Jack Studios. Coos around here on a Tuesday. Hope everybody's doing well. Are you awake, Austin Lane? Yeah, man, feeling great. Ready to roll. You get a nap in? Uh, yeah, I got my usual 20-minute nap in, so yeah, okay. I'm feeling great. So how did it go this morning? It was good. It was good. Um, we, we had some interesting topics, had some I interesting callers. Yeah, yeah, there's some interesting callers out there in Jacksonville, go figure. But it, it was a great time. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I'm not trying to sound cocky or anything or talk a lot of smack, but it's a lot harder to talk sports for like three hours a day than it is to talk for like maybe 15 minutes an hour with, with, the, with the songs and everything. Yeah. Um, so I felt comfortable. Let's just say that. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, you, you really got to pick your spots and you better be good in those spots and on that yep. WAPE in the morning because I, I listened in the oh, last half hour. Nice. And I think I heard you once. I know, man. That's the thing. Like, here, it's like, let's be honest. I mean, it's three hours. Let's, uh, give or take, it's probably like 2.30, right? Two hours and 30 minutes. And we, we got to make it last. With that gig, it's like, you better bring something. You better bring it hard because you don't have that much time. No. Um, I mean, by the way, I'm hoping you're good all the time here, too, for two and, a, two and a half hours or whatever it might be. It just depends how many commercials we sell. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that time varies. But mm -hmm. uh, you better be good today. No excuses. I'm not giving you like, ah, I've been talking for 15 minutes, an hour in the morning, had to get up early. I don't care. See, you better bring it. Oh, and here's the crazy thing. You're acting like a sport that I played pretty much my entire life is going to be hard to talk about for two and a half hours. <laughs> hey, uh, I was made for this, Brent. Don't worry about me, man. Are you okay? Are you I'm, ready to roll? I'm ready to rock, All man. Right. I'm All telling right. you, I, I think I'm going to work from home forever. Uh, <laughs> sneak a game of Miss Pac-Man in. Yeah. Um, had a better day on Miss Pac-Man. Oh, wait. So then you end up getting the Miss Pac-Man game. Oh, yeah. We got it. Nice. Uh, I, I'm addicted. Yeah play it all uh, all different times a day have you beat um, it yet no mm. i might i might get um i'm thinking of just getting another one for the office okay flex get, when we go back flex you know? yeah or else you can just put it in the truck and carry it back and forth if you really <laughs> yeah, have I'm not to. doing that yeah <laughs> I'm not doing that. i do have a question about ms pac-man a, a little bit later on in the show I, I want answered because we had a little debate in the house okay uh, so we'll get to that but the urban meyer stuff is not dying down uh and uh it's still a pretty hot thing I think the latest is uh, the only news out about Urban Meyer, by the way, is the fact or, or report. I shouldn't even say it's news, but these are all reports from 
you know, the twelve million dollar report yesterday to uh, now Ian Rappaport says that pro football talk report about how much money uh, was not true when it comes to the Jaguars, <laughs> which I thought was a very interestingly worded tweet. Mm-hmm. Because it says when it comes to the Jaguars, well, the Chargers job's open, and now there are reports that the Chargers are interested too. And so if $12 million isn't the number, is that just for the Jaguars, or is $12 million not the number because Urban isn't going to get $12 million? So his people said, all right, I mean, we don't have to have $12 million. 10 will be okay. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. So I don't really know. The number game is really interesting. I don't really think – to me it doesn't matter. Like, that stuff is, you know, pay them whatever you got to pay them. I mean, bottom line is I can tell you that if you look at the coaches in the National Football League and if you look at coaches across college, they're making a lot of money. Yeah. You know, now Doug Marone was, I think, only making maybe like three and a half, four million. I say only. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Matt Rule comes in the league and he gets a seven year contract, which is huge in terms of length. And then on top of that, it's like almost $9 million a year. Well, to me, if that's the measuring stick now. I mean, he's the college guy coming to the NFL game. He's making almost $9 million and he's getting that length of time. So. You know, I'm not going to put anybody coming into the league with Belichick, Pete Carroll, uh, and those guys that might be north of $10 million. But John Gruden, who, by the way, also has a, has a resume, I think he could stand alone. But if these other guys are now making, you know, if Matt Rule's making eight and a half, nine million a year, well, I mean, I think that becomes, at least for a guy with Urban Meyer's resume, at least some sort of benchmark for getting back in the NFL. And I guess it depends how much he makes at Fox, too, because True. how much can you rip him away for? So well, it, we'll see where that lands. And, and here's my perspective on it. Is Urban Meyer worth $12 million? The more important question, does it matter to me? Absolutely not. Because guess what, Brent? It's not my money. It's not your money. It's not the show's money. So pay him as much as you want. Like, we had Patrick Mahomes last year sign a, well, actually this year, sign a deal for 10, uh, 10 years, $503 million. Okay, so everyone's making money in the NFL. If it's going to cost you $12 million a year to get that big name coach, to get some hype around this city, then so be it. I mean, Shad Khan's bringing Sting to AEW. I don't know how much that costs, man. If you got to pay Urban Meyer $12 million, then so be it. Yeah, I, I, again, I, I'm with you. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, if well, you got to pay to play. You yeah. know, that's, that's the thing. What I think is interesting here is the dynamic of how much could Urban Meyer actually command what would draw him away, or is that even a question mark from the from the Fox Studios? And then on top of that, if this is what I'd be a little careful of with all these numbers floating around, um, and and again, these are just numbers. These aren't nobody's actual. I I don't really believe anything I I see <laughs> until it happens. <laughs> so I think these are just all part of the rumor game flying around, and people. Are, are putting stuff out there and maybe some of it is true by the way you can make some sense of some of the numbers i mean he was probably offered a boatload to go to texas you know if that was real and he turned that down so it can't be all about the money um but what i think is interesting a little bit from the jazz perspective is you don't want to have to overpay somebody that you don't think is worth it and and so i'm not talking about urban but what if urban says hey i'm not getting back into coaching and and what if the jags say well we really weren't interested in as much as everybody said well then you move on to your next guy and whoever your next guy is let's just say arthur smith and and arthur smith is well i mean you were gonna get we heard you were gonna give urban 12 million so i mean we're gonna charge eight (laughs) you know so i think you got to be a little careful that especially for some of the hot names out there when you're trying to get the best guy even we talk about this in free agency well, in the coaching circle, you might have to overpay a little bit because, listen, the Chargers job is a pretty good job. The Jets job might not be a bad job. I think you can make cases the other jobs aren't as great as they look on paper. But, you know, if there are two or three jobs out there and you're, say, you're Urban or Arthur Smith and those guys are the hot names and people are after you, well, I mean, sometimes, listen, that's negotiation, right? I mean, that's mm-hmm. supply and demand. That's just the way it shakes out. And so the Jags could end up paying a little bit more. Now, listen, Matt Rule, I think Carolina, how many people were going to pay Matt Rule $8.5 million, $9 million over the course of seven years? I don't think many. But I think that basically was, we want you. We want you. We're, gonna show, we're not even going to risk this. We're going to get you. Uh, and so it, it, you can do that way, too. I mean, much like the Raiders did when they got John Gruden. They said, hey, it's going to cost you this much to yank you out of the booth? Well, 10 years, 10, uh, 10 years $100 million. Boom. Much like... Hey, what can we get Jimbo Fisher for at Texas A&M? Ten years, seventy-five million guaranteed. Boom. So sometimes you have to do that, and and maybe that will be the case with an Urban Meyer. Um, yeah. But, but 
it's, it's going to be a costly endeavor. No, it's definitely going to be a costly endeavor. And I think from Urban Meyer's perspective, listen, I don't know how much net worth Urban Meyer has. I have to think that he's done pretty well for himself, being the head coach of the Florida Gators and the Ohio State Buckeyes and now doing his, you know, Fox Sports 1 uh, gig. Like, I'm sure the guy's very well off with money. But once again, I, I always say this. It's not necessarily like... If you were to pay somebody $12 million, I think that $12 million would come with expectations like, hey, man, if you're going to be one of the highest paid you know, coaches in the NFL, you got to take us to a Super Bowl. Like, that's, that's the goal, and that's what you want to hear. But at the end of the day, if I'm Urban Meyer, I'm looking at, listen, if you're willing to pay me $12 million, that shows that you want me. You, you want me more than anybody else. You want me more than the Fox gig. You want me more than the, maybe the Chargers. You want me more than anybody else, and people want to go where they're wanted. So to me, that's what the money's going to say. You know, now, whether he's earned that or not, that's up for debate. But at the end of the day, if you pay Urban Meyer $12 million and he doesn't turn that down, he says, absolutely, I get it. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I just want uh, the update on the Urban Meyer front is not really much. I mean, other than that Rappaport report about the dollars. Um, but I also think it's not much, meaning it's not going away. You know, there's a simple thing that ends the Urban Meyer talk. Somebody says, we're not interested in him. Or he says... I'm not interested in you. And until that happens, guess what we're talking about every day here in Jacksonville? <laughs> because I do feel, I still feel like that buzz is real. We don't know for sure. There's a lot of things that get thrown out there. Uh, and I'm, I'm aware of that. I'm trying to keep that in my mind, too, because the way people talk and agents talk and, and you try to, I, I, I'm not convinced all this urban stuff once again, while some real might not be to get another two or $3 million back in the Fox studios to say, hey, you want to keep this guy or not, but you got to have to give him a raise. You know, I mean, that's the way the coaching world works sometimes in the college game. And I would bet even in the NFL game, and he's got a little bit of leverage because he's already got a job. So I'm not convinced that's not part of all this talk about urban, but I do think it's real. Do you think all this is as real as the buzz is when it comes to urban Meyer? Uh, do, do I think it's real as in him coming to Jacksonville is what you're saying? Say that one more time. Uh, I said, are you asking if I think it's real that he's coming to Jacksonville, like that buzz, or that he wants to coach in the NFL? Uh, that, well, both, really. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it is real because his name has been thrown out a lot, it seems like, the past few weeks or so, especially this week. And I, I don't know, man. Like, I'm not Ruben Meyer, and I'm not a head football coach, and I understand there's a lot of ego that goes with that position. But one would think that if you keep hearing your name out in the airwaves, you know, is Urban Meyer going to go here? Is he going to is he going to leave his Fox job and go coach? Like, eventually, if it's not true, I feel like Urban Meyer comes out and says something like, "Hey, I don't want to do this." Now, everyone loves to have their name in the headlines, and and you know, everyone loves to see their name trending on Twitter or whatever the case may be for a while, right? But then eventually, especially if you're a grown man. It gets kind of tiresome, and you come out and say, yeah, I'm thanks, but no thanks. I like what I'm doing right now. Urban Meyer hasn't even given a clue that he's into doing that quite yet. So I do think there's legs to Urban Meyer wanting to coach in the NFL. I do think that any coach, um, whether it's high school, the college ranks, or the pro ranks, has that eagle that says, you know what? My system, my philosophy, and everything that I know about the game of that, of that you know, of, of the game of football – I can work that wherever. I can go to a Pop Warner team and make it work. I can go to college and make it work. And I can go to the pros to make it work. And I think Urban Meyer wants to see, after all he's, all he's accomplished in college, if he can make his system work at the next level. Yeah, uh, I think there's part of that, too. I think a lot of people want to um, see if that, that really can happen um, when they're in that position, right? See if they can get to the top of the heap. And, and of course, I do think there is the rush of the sideline when it comes to uh, Urban Meyer as well somebody brought this up to me um and i want to get your thoughts on this one of the reasons why urban meyer might maybe have a maybe from the stress standpoint of it all or anything else might be a little bit more comfortable at the nfl level is you're not as responsible for everybody's actions in the nfl as you are in college and what do i mean by that well if a kid gets popped on a college campus for underage drinking Guess who has to answer to that? Not necessarily the kid, but the coach, usually, of the, of the football team. If the same thing happens to X player in the NFL, that coach has to say, yeah, that's a bad look, and the team issues a statement. But guess who's answering to that? Like the kid. 
you know, or the young player or the young mm-hmm. man. And so some of that stuff where, like, I guess the blame goes around a little bit more, you know, yeah. like, like even if you miss on recruits, that's on the coach. Doesn't matter that your assistant defensive backs coach was the guy that recruited him. It's on you. Mm-hmm. If in this business, and we see this a lot when things go wrong, if you missed on the second round pick, well, you blame the GM. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's like, you're not, it's just every single thing that might go wrong, which, by the way, when you're running these kind of things, things go wrong, doesn't come right back to you, which just adds stress. I'm not saying Urban Meyer doesn't want any part of the accountability. It's certainly, he's tied into it all. But he doesn't have to answer for everything. I thought it was a pretty good point. And, and I think if you raise the stress level of a college job, which somebody also brought up, like, which more stressful, college job or NFL job? I think it's debatable. But if you add that part in, well, I think it's fair to say that that part of the college game, you're responsible for everything. What that kid ate for lunch, how much he lifted in the weight room, what he did at 8 o'clock to midnight or after midnight. I mean, you are answering to everything in the college game. Uh, not so much in the NFL. No, well, without a doubt. And I've said it before. I mean, it's almost like, you know, you're, you're babysitting to an extent and you're trying to shape young men um, because a lot of, you know, those high school kids that come on campus, there is some immaturity still. So you have to take them underneath your wing, make sure they're going to classes, make sure they get all their homework done, um, how they do in the test. Like, there's a lot that goes in to being a college coach. But not only off the field, but also on the field. Because I always felt like when you're in college, like you're still teaching the game, um, you know, to these student athletes in college. Just because depending where they went to high school depends like, how high their football IQs are. And if you have a kid who maybe went to a small school, didn't have the best coaches, you you, you got to reteach the game that how you want him to know it in your image so he can run your system. Once you get to the NFL, I feel like you can breathe a little better because every guy in the NFL is going to understand the game to some capacity, whether you're D3, D2, D1, Juco, whatever. Like, everybody in the NFL, they understand the game. And I think from a college coach going to the NFL, that's a refreshing take because now it's not so much, all right, I got to teach you this. I got to. No, it's here's what I want. Can you do it or not? If you can do it, then we'll find somebody else to do it for you. Yeah, that's a good point. I think there's some self-responsibility. You own your body. You own your rest of your career in the NFL. NFL. You know, it's it does feel like that's up to the player. Hey, Taven Bryan, if you want to turn your career around, well, then you better get your butt in gear. Mm-hmm. Hey, Jawan Taylor, if you're going to really take off in this league, you need a big year three. That's not necessarily like we're not blaming necessarily Doug Marone or the line coach for that. We're more blaming the player. Get better. Yeah. Uh, in the college game, I think you are right. Well, there might be some blame for the player. And that was a bust. And oh, I can't st- I can't believe he was a five star guy and he didn't live up to it. It still goes back to the coach. You recruited that guy. You missed on that guy. Uh, so it's it's interesting. I want to talk a little bit more about that stress level in a moment. But let's get Sean in early in the show here on a Tuesday on Action Sports Chats on ESPN 690. He wants to talk a little about Urban Meyer. What's up, man? Happy New Year. Hey, Happy New Year, you guys, man. It's been a little while. I hope everybody had a good New Year. Um, question for you guys about Urban Meyer. I have a feeling. So I don't, I don't necessarily feel like Urban Meyer is the correct fit for the team. And I only say that because – Urban Meyer got, had an opportunity to choose his guys, to mold his guys, which made them successful. If he becomes an NFL head coach, he doesn't have the opportunity to actually mold guys. They've already been molded. They have already are who they are. So in that respect, I don't think he will transfer very well into the NFL because he's not having the opportunity to choose, to pick and choose. Those guys worked hard for him. They, they succeeded for him. It's not the same way in the NFL. They're not doing it for him. They're doing it for themselves. It's more of a selfish act. Sean, I appreciate the call, man. Thanks. That's a very good question, too. And it actually leads into something that's in our topic today. Is this a perfect time for the Jaguars to transition to a college coach? Like, it, it's debatable whether a college coach can work in the NFL. But the reason I say that, Austin, and, and you can speak about what Sean just mentioned, too, mm-hmm. uh, because I have some thoughts on that. But the reason I say it in this context is the Jags are so young. Like, their team is young. Like, I could make the case, okay, if Urban Meyer comes in here and you tell me – Uh, or any college coach for that matter, but I'll say Urban Meyer because that's a hot name. If he comes in here and you say, ah, he's not going to make it. I mean, he's not going to relate to the guy, the pro athlete, the guy that's making millions of dollars, all that stuff. I'm like, can I kind of say the same about like Brad Stevens when he went to the Celtics? You know, the college coach hadn't worked in the NBA very much, right? Calipari Mm -hmm. and Patino and others. Well, that was a young team in Boston, remember? 
how mm-hmm. young it was. Like, he could actually shape those guys. And almost, at least in the early stages, while he adapted to the NBA game, treat it almost like it was still college because he had so many young guys. Well, I kind of feel like the Jags roster's built that way a little bit. He's got a young football team, the youngest in the NFL, which I think is an overrated stat. But it's true that they are young players, a young foundation. You don't have a lot of 10-year vets, 12-year vets. I can't believe he's doing it this way. You really don't have a lot of that in the Jags locker room. So could this be the perfect time if you're going to try a college coach to maybe transition him in? Yeah, I mean, there's obviously an argument right now that the Jaguars being the youngest team in the NFL, like – they're almost like clay, right? And you need someone to mold them um, into the image of being a playoff contender and then hopefully going to a Super Bowl. Like, that's part of it. With Urban Meyer and the whole narrative of, hey, listen, like he's not recruiting his guys, he doesn't have his guys, I understand that point. But what I'm looking at is take the recruiting out of it and I'm even going to take the whole college coaching thing out of it real quick and just ask yourself the question. Can he build a culture? Can he get the maximum development out of his players? Yes or no. Now, I don't have that answer off the top of my head, but, like, I compare it to this. 2012, Kansas City Chiefs had a head coach by the name of Romeo Crennel. Now, I think he's a pretty good coach overall, but that year they went 2-14. and the next season, Andy Reid comes in, essentially with the same roster. Now, granted, they had one draft and things like that, but essentially it was the exact same roster. You know how the Chiefs finished the next year with Andy Reid and pretty much the same roster? 11-5, and five, right? Because he changed the culture. He got the maximum output out of his players, and they reaped the benefits. They, I think they got second place in the AFC West that year. So I understand the whole thing of what happens if Urban doesn't have his guys. Like, to me, it shouldn't matter. Either you're a good coach, you you can develop players, you can build a culture, or you can't. And all I have to go off of from Urban Meyer is every place that he's been, he's been able to do that so far. Well, and I think in the NFL, this is one thing that gets lost. Guys respect success. And they know Urban Meyer. Yeah, you might be, listen, man, you don't know the NFL game. Blah, blah. That might be a little bit of that. But I think there's an instant respect for a guy who's won as much as Urban Meyer's won. You know, I I think whether you're a veteran in the NFL or not, I think there's a respect for that. I I could question whether there's a respect for Arthur Smith. But, I mean, the same NFL guy might be able to be like, yeah, what have you done, man? Like, you never even played in the league. Like, you never – you've hardly played football. And you've done this for, like, two years at a high level. So what? You know? So, I mean, you could – those questions are real for anybody. I understand how they are real a little bit for the college game. Now, more to Sean's point, the recruiting aspect of it, I think he brings up a good point. Here's the big difference. The big difference in the college game is if I miss on quarterback and I'm Urban Meyer, well, remember when he won a national championship at Ohio State with three different quarterbacks? Mm, That's because he's got three good quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Like, Georgia had three five-star quarterbacks. You don't do that in the NFL. But You miss on Trevor Lawrence. You miss on your running back. You miss on your guard. You don't have another five-star or $30 million guy rolling in or first-round pick rolling in most of the time in those spots. And so that's where it's a little bit different. But I still think he knows what a good football player looks like, and that will be working with the GM and him to determine what good football players look like in the NFL. Well, here's the thing, too. Like, when Urban Meyer was recruiting in college, obviously he had the type of player that he was looking for. Now, obviously having a, a fi- you know, five stars next to your name doesn't hurt anything either. Like, that's the whole game of college football. But when we talk about the NFL, and let's say Urban Meyer is indeed the, the coach going forward now for the Jaguars, when you go to the combine and you interview every single player, when you go to the, you know, when you go to the film room and, and, and you watch film of, of these college games, aren't you essentially recruiting? Like, aren't you saying, hey – this guy, I like his personality. Um, I like his attitude. I like the way he looks on film. I want him on my team. Let's draft him or let's get him in free agency. Isn't that recruiting? Absolutely. I, I think there's an element to it, and that's why I say I don't think this is that. I think Urban Meyer is such a good recruiter. He knows what a good football player looks like. And so, okay, you've got to translate that good football player from high school to college to college to the NFL or whatever pieces of the puzzle you want to put together. I think Urban Meyer – could say, hey, I know what I want to run this offense, and I need this, 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 and this, and this to run the offense. I think he could do that at Pop Warner. I think he could do it in the Canadian League. I think he could do it in the NFL and college. I just think the big difference is if you do make a mistake in college, you might have three more guys that could fill that role because you have a backlog of five-star, four-star players, especially at the elite programs. You don't get the luxury of that in the NFL. You miss, 
you might miss big, especially at certain positions. But that's just the nature of the beast, and that's why you better be a good talent evaluator, and you better be good at putting together the puzzle. It's a little bit more of a jigsaw puzzle than a 12-piece puzzle in college. So uh, it's something certainly that you can question, and we won't know. But I do think Urban Meyer, or any college coach, really, knows what a good football player looks like uh, for sure. We're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, the latest name in the interview request list is Eric Bieniemy. This guy has to get a job in this cycle, doesn't he? Like, has to get a job. Mm-hmm. What do you think about Eric Bieniemy? And I'm warning everybody that does. I know there's a lot of folks that don't want the Urban Meyer stuff. I am still in the camp that I will not be surprised at all if Urban Meyer chooses to stay in the Fox studio uh, at, at, for the next couple of years. Or forever, for that matter. You better have some other options if you're whoever. Fans, Shad Khan, we don't even know what's been offered or anything to Urban Meyer. But again... These other guys you better vet out in a serious, serious way, especially if you're waiting on Urban to decide or not, if that's kind of the feel of what's going on. Uh, but anyway, Eric Bieniemy coming up next. Is it a Kansas City thing, or can he be the next big thing in the coaching ranks in the NFL? We talk about it next on ESPN 6 Night. Action Sports Jacks with Brent Martineau on ESPN 690 is brought to you by Best Bet Jacksonville and Orange Park. Now, the first alert forecast on ESPN 690. Plenty of sun this afternoon and temperatures really pretty pleasant. will cool off quickly this evening and overnight into clear skies dropping to near 40. Mostly to partly sunny tomorrow, your Wednesday high 63 and partly sunny and warmer Thursday up to 69. From the First Alert Weather Center, I'm Action News Jack's Chief Meteorologist, McBurray. The Weather Center is brought to you by Beards Diamonds, where you get the lowest diamond price guaranteed or your money back. No matter what you are driving, you can step up to luxury now at any of the Fields Auto Group dealerships in Jacksonville. Cadillac, Jaguar, Land Rover, Lexus, Mercedes-Benz, and Porsche. Yes, it's luxury for less at all Fields Auto Group locations in Jacksonville. Plus, you'll also be part of their exclusive Fields Amenities Program, where you will get complimentary loaners, car washes, and cafes. So whatever you're driving, see Fields first and step up to luxury for less during this amazing opportunity. Visit FieldsAuto.com. Hi, it's Phil with the Phil Aiken Home Team at Keller Williams. When it comes time to sell your home, put me and the Aiken Home Team to work for you. Here's why. Over the years, I've perfected the home selling system, putting the most money possible in your pocket. With my exclusive list of buyers in waiting, I may already have your buyer. And with thousands of buyers, I'm likely to create more demand and higher sales prices. I'll even guarantee to sell your home at a price agreeable to you or I'll buy it myself. Don't just take it from me. Let me introduce actual clients, Lynn and Craig. Tell us about your home selling experience. We were immediately at ease. We had a great deal of confidence that any questions we had or uh, anything that we needed to learn about the process was going to be handled in an expert and professional way. We sold our home in just two days for $3,500 more than list price. Anyone who wants to sell needs to call Phil Aiken Home Team. Thanks for sharing. The number to call is 904 500 Phil. That's 904-500-7445. Or visit philhasthebuyers.com. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and school just isn't for you, earn while you learn by enrolling in the Clara White Mission Workforce Training, designed for 16 to 24-year-olds and no experience necessary. National certifications include culinary arts, OSHA, Hazwopper, forklifting, environmental training, and more. These programs are customized for low-income and disadvantaged. Make your way to the Clara White Mission Training Center at 613 West Ashley Street. Call 904-354-4162 or visit clarawhitemission.org. For the ones standing guard, for the eagle-eyed, for the knights in shining armor, and for all those who support them, we are Granger, your experienced safety partner, offering supplies and solutions for every industry, committed to helping keep your facilities safe and your people safer. Call, click Granger.com slash safety, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. 
I'm Rochelle Stoddard, president of Berman Brothers and Rubin Ironworks. The skills and relationships I've built through the Jacksonville Women's Business Center were essential as we succeeded in keeping all 70 of our employees on the payroll during the COVID-19 pandemic. Through the Athena PowerLink Mentoring Program, we had experienced professionals helping us navigate 2020. Jack's Chamber and the Women's Business Center are in our corner, making us stronger in these difficult times. For more information, please visit jackschamberfoundation.org. If you love golf, you need to get this deal. Eight rounds of golf for less than 12 bucks a round, plus card fees with the Dream 18 Golf Cart at great area golf courses like the Golf Club at Southampton, the Club at Osprey Cove, and Hidden Hills Golf Club. And this isn't just a golf cart. Get a free shirt from Baker Sports, a free hat at Dome Hats, and a free smoothie from Smoothie King, plus 15% off any purchase at Palm Beach Autographs. Go to ESPN690.com to purchase the Dream 18 card for just $95. Hundreds of dollars in savings and the perfect gift. What if the music stopped? If the familiar voices were silenced? If there were no breaking news updates? What if your companion and connection to your community came with a monthly fee? Don't worry, we're free local radio with you wherever you go. Celebrating 100 years and looking forward to the next 100. We are broadcasters. Text radio to 52886 and let Congress know you depend on your local TV and radio stations. This message furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Austin Lane from Action Sports Jackson ESPN 690. Social distancing doesn't mean disconnecting. If you're working from home, keep tabs on the world of sports and Action Sports Jacks on your smart speaker. Tell your Amazon Echo or Google Home, play ESPN 690. Mike Greenberg is Greeny. The Jets are now not going to get that first pick, and so they become now the franchise that has nothing, which is what happens when the people at the top are incompetent and clueless. It is exclusively about what is better for the franchise, and there is nothing, nothing better about being 1-15 without Trevor Lawrence than being 0-16 with him. Greeny with Mike Greenberg, weekdays at noon Eastern on ESPN Radio. And now, watch exclusively on ESPN+. Plus. Brent Martineau. Uh, Daniel uh, says, we went from hot Cheetos to shampoo, raising the intellectual portion of the show. Austin Lane. I'm wearing a sleeveless T-shirt. What more do you want from us, man? Like, I mean, it's Friday. We never said we're intellectual. Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. Like, I don't think this town really wants Urban Liar as the coach of the Jags. I mean, seriously, the first little sign of stress or he's not doing well, he's going to claim he has a health issue. I mean, come on, Florida, you remember. Ohio State, you remember the same. I mean, seriously. And have any of his quarterbacks really done anything in life except be commentators? <laughs> That's awesome. Shots fired. Who's? Where was that from? Do you know? Some open mics we got. Okay. Uh, so. Well, I mean, if we're being honest there, his quarterbacks have done a lot. Let's be honest. Now, in the NFL, maybe not so much. And they're also pretty good Wonderlick score takers. Test takers. Not as good as me. <laughs> Tim, missed it by one, man. Missed it by that much. But it's all right. I still got respect for you. The. What's interesting about that, okay, it. Do you think – I kind of feel like the whole – as soon as he starts losing, he's going to get sick and health's going to go bad and he's going to leave. Like, I, I, I get the narrative, but it's like such – it's it feels lazy to me. It's He was at Florida for six years, won two national titles. And again, listen, I don't – it's okay. I'm not sitting here to defend Urban Meyer. I'm just saying if you take this whole thing at face value, he left – Florida with a ton of baggage. It, it was, it was not good. It, the whole thing felt weird, and it was weird that 11 months later he was at Ohio State, and it was a mess to clean up in Gainesville. There were a lot of bad things going on. I mean, you can read all the articles. I don't think people dispute that. Like the the, the character issues they had in that locker room and on that field, and I mean, it's almost like thank goodness they had Tim Tebow. I don't know. I, again, I still think it would be like the greatest 30 for 30 ever is that team. Uh, and what they had personality-wise. But then you go to Ohio State, and he's there for seven years. So six years at Florida, seven years at at Ohio State, yeah. and he's left Ohio State fine. Again, the Zach Smith stuff was kind of its own deal. That guy went crazy, it felt like. And maybe, you know, Urban Meyer certainly 
didn't help that situation. So he can get criticism for that. But he didn't leave them a mess like he left Florida. It's almost like they learned something about that. Did he have different character people there? Did he learn something about that at Florida? Uh, it's and, and, again, we're talking about six years and seven years, Austin. And health is a real issue. Um, like, I've been told multiple people, and you can ask anybody that has any kind of ties to anybody that knows Urban Meyer, like, it's not fake stuff when it comes to the health stuff. So I just feel like it's so overblown that he's going to lose two games in September and he's going to quit. Yeah. I mean, I, it's so dramatic. It's a little bit lazy. It's, a, it's almost like I'm tired of that narrative. The bottom line is, look at Jacksonville the last three years. They've had a head coach that was there for one year, a head coach that was there four years, and a head coach that was there four years. Well, Urban Meyer's last two stints lasted longer than the longest stint of a Jaguars coach Mm -hmm. in the last decade. Mm -hmm. Sign me up for five years of Urban Meyer right now, and if he doesn't feel well after that, see you later. I mean, if if we're just talking about that, the health part, and he's going to quit, if things don't go right. It's, that's a bad way to say I don't want Urban Meyer. If you don't like the idea of transitioning to the NFL, if, if you're not a big Meyer fan just because you don't really think he's a great guy and you don't want to be associated with that, that, I'm all for all those things. I just feel like if he loses, he's going to turn around and quit. Yeah, stop. Well, no, no I, I understand that. And um, people do have the right to say that based off history a little bit. I mean, you did a great job of breaking it down, but let's be honest. If the Jaguars didn't lose a lot of games the first couple years and he he chose to walk away, I mean, you want to talk about a franchise with bad optics, that might be the worst one of all. So I get people's concerns. But I also think, and we talk about this all the time, in in the realms of head coaching, right? There's, There's ego involved. And I know that ego and pride are sometimes separate things, but I want to combine them right now. Like, every single coach, whether you're at college or in the pros, you have ego and you have pride. And I think what a coach wants more than anything um, out of that profession is to be respected by his peers and to, and to go down as one of the best to ever do it. And Urban Meyer has had a lot of success, and you will never take that away from him. But when you talk around in circles and, and you ask, hey, what are your thoughts about Urban Meyer? People sometimes tend to bring up, well, he left here, or he left here when it got hard. Urban Meyer doesn't want to hear that. Like, you're you're only as good as, you know, your last coaching gig, I guess, um, on the game of football. And right now, while he had a lot of success at Ohio State, some people feel like he left and, you know, he kind of left and it left some, a bad taste in people's mouths. So with that being said, I think in terms of, like, a redemption arc or just in terms of Urban Meyer wanting to, to go out on top, like, this is how he does it. Now, whether or not he cares what people think about him or not, so be it. But I'm just saying, in terms of coaching, everybody wants respect and everybody wants to be considered, you know, in the hierarchy of greats. And I think if Urban Meyer does this and he has success, then you can put him up there. Yeah, uh, it, it's, it'll be really interesting. I want to talk about another candidate, um, and that's Eric Bieniemy. Eric Bieniemy apparently, reportedly, will, was uh, the Jags requested an interview with him, and he's been bouncing around. I read something on Eric Bieniemy last year that he only took, I think, four interviews, and some. I think it was who was it? Ah, uh, shoot, maybe Arizona that wanted to interview him either last year or the year prior, but he had already done four, so he didn't take a fifth. Um, so mm-hmm. interesting because he's in the playoffs and all the stuff going on. He probably is only going to do maybe another four interviews uh, because he has to get back to work on the postseason. That, that's my assumption. Bottom line is, I like Eric Bieniemy, man. I, I like the idea of Eric Bieniemy. Uh, I like the Andy Reid tree. I do caution that you're not going to be able to play video game football like they do in Kansas City. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but where do you stand on Eric Bieniemy as a possible candidate? Uh, because he's a hot name, and i got to believe he gets a job in this cycle. Yeah, you know, I mean, I I broke it down a little bit yesterday, but there's just something about coming from the Andy Reid coaching tree compared to the Bill Belichick tree that it it just sticks out, you know, and the fact that he has spent some time there, um, he has gone about how Andy Reid does things, and this is why, like, listen, I I can think of a, a million reasons why Bill Belichick, you know, guys don't do that well, and Andy Reid guys do, But, like, what it comes down to for me is anybody that's, you know, I guess coached under Bill Belichick, like, I think they go to the other team and they try to be Bill Belichick. 
right? And there's no way you can do that. Like, I've never met Bill Belichick, but from what I've heard um, in circles, from what I see on TV and on the sidelines, there's only one Bill Belichick. So there is no sense in trying to copy what that guy is about because you'll never do it. And if you try, you're going to crash and burn. Andy Reid, on the other hand, while you may not be able to copy his offensive genius, his fervor per se, you can maybe copy that personality. And you can have some fun. Now, Doug Peterson, I understand right now, is in hot water with the Eagles as he should be. But Doug Peterson, when he first got to Philly, like I saw a lot of mannerisms in Doug Peterson that I saw myself for a couple weeks with Andy Reid. You know, like the, the whole thing when Doug Peterson would b- break down a meeting, say, hey, let's get some ice cream. Well, Andy Reid said the exact same thing except with burgers. So you can tell that, you know, Andy Reid has a direct influence on terms of having some fun, building the culture, and obviously maybe the offensive mind as well. So when we talk about Eric B. Enemy, we talk about other guys in that coaching tree, like a John Harbaugh, um, like a Sean McDermott, like – like a Doug Peterson, I think they've taken bits and pieces of who Andy Reid is, and then they add their own personality to it. I think the Bill Belichick guys try to be Bill Belichick, and that backfires. So as far as the personality traits, as far as what Eric Bieniemy brings to the table, I mean, I've never had a long conversation with the guy, so it's hard to say. But I think from a teacher in Andy Reid, number one, an offensive philosophy, number two, and, a, and a being quarterback friendly, number three, you have to like what you hear about Eric Bieniemy. Yeah, I listen, man. I like. Uh, I, <laughs> it's a weird thing. It's like I get wrapped up in like these ages sometimes, and I don't know why. And I, and I don't. I don't just look at their age, but I just I feel like he's in an interesting spot in his life and career, and it might be a good match for the Jags uh, because he's fifty-one. He made some mistakes as a younger person, a younger man, uh, in his twenties that you don't escape from those, but you grow from those, and you're not the same guy you were 20, 25 years ago, and, <laughs> and he's had no issues. And so I've had people bring that up to me. It's like, oh, do you see what he – okay, that's 25 years ago. I mean, yeah. uh, listen, uh, if, I mean, we, we, we elect presidents that have had interesting pasts, all of them, by the way, not just the last one, but all of them. So uh, you're not going to get this squeaky clean all the time. But I, I like the fact that he's gone through some trials and tribulations. He's grown up. In, uh, in terms of a maturation of his coaching profession, and now is getting this validation from Andy Reid, who, by the way, is slowly climbing into to be one of the all-time greats in coaching, as you always mention, Austin. Uh, I, I think there's a lot to like of this guy. It's not – I don't get as much enamored with, oh, look what he's done with Patrick Mahomes and their offense. I think it's look what he's learned from and been around – and the creativity that that offense does show sometimes, some of these odd video game-esque kind of plays, mm-hmm. I like the innovation nature of that. Well, and maybe one of the, the biggest benefits, in my opinion, of coming from the, the Andy Reid coaching tree is that the Kansas City Chiefs now for, heck, since I was, you know, um, even getting drafted and things like that back in 2010, and especially when Andy Reid took over there, I think it was in 2013, or 12, I'm sorry, it's the fact that, they have their specific type of guy that they look for personality and also athleticism you know body type all that stuff like there's a certain type of player that's a kansas city chiefs player and i like that a lot like a lot of teams they're gonna draft like our best available that's fine but that's not outside the box thinking the Kansas City Chiefs always take some risks. They're always kind of like, oh, what are they taking this guy for? Because they know he's going to fit their system. And I want a coach that knows what he wants. And if you know what you want, then that means when the GM comes in, you can work great with him as well. I've got one more question and a quick little maybe fun story on Eric Bieniemy coming up uh, next. Action Sports Shacks on ESPN 690. Apparently, Urban Meyer is not at City Hall. Don't believe those tweets, by the way. <laughs> ESPN 690 Sports Center Update. Happy Tuesday. I'm Jake Mitchell. The entire NFL has lots of job openings after a Monday full of cuts. Everybody from Anthony Lynn at the Chargers, Adam Gates from the Jets, even John Elway is going to be micromanaged from here on out. Here in Duval, Doug Marone has been let go. Shot Khan believes, though, the job openings here will draw the top candidates. I certainly think there's a huge amount of interest. Uh, 
you know, in this uh, much more so than the last time around. You know, certainly we have a lot of salary cap uh, availability along with the draft picks and um, obviously the number one pick. Jags have requested to interview San Francisco's defensive coordinator Robert Sulla, and the biggest name linked to the job so far has been Urban Meyer. NFL rules state that the Jacksonville Jaguars must go through an extensive interview process. Sports Center update is brought to you by Morgan and Morgan. Morgan and Morgan for the people. Happy holidays from the team at CGC Water. This holiday season, our gift to you is clean drinking water. A Kinetico system from CGC Water removes up to 99% of contaminants. That's clean. Right now, CGC Water is offering a free A200 reverse osmosis drinking water system with the purchase of a Kinetico Premier softener like the one we have at our home. If you're still not filtering your water, you are the filter. Schedule your free water test today and get peace of mind knowing your family's water is safe water. CGC is still taking extra precautions with in-home visits and continuing to follow CDC guidelines. Remember now, this is a limited time offer. A free A200 reverse osmosis drinking water system with the purchase of a Connecticut Premier Softener. Special holiday financing available for a limited time with approved credit. Call 904-552-1242 for details or visit cgcwater.com. Serving Northeast Florida and Southeast Georgia, CGC Water Treatment, your local independent Connecticut dealer. Have a happy and safe holiday season. We should always be looking at our finances, but 2020 made my family take an even closer look, a bit more of a deeper dive, and it might have done the same for you, even into the world of retirement. Although that's a bit down the road for me, it might be closer for you, and your plan should already be under a microscope, and you have to lean on the experts to help guide the right plan. My friend Mike Lester with Talent Wealth Management is the perfect partner. He will provide a complimentary analysis and a plan for you. Call him at 904-515-5000 or visit guardingyournestegg.com. That's 904-515-5000 or guardingyournestegg.com. Mike will give you the guidance you need as retirement gets closer. He can help you convert company plans to private plans, a move that might give you higher returns and more options. You've earned the money. Now make sure you are ready for whenever retirement will be. Call Mike Lester at Talon Wealth Management, 904-515-5000. That's 904-515-5000. Or visit guardingyournesteg.com. I'm Action News Jack's Tanika Hughes, and one of the great things about living in Jacksonville is our diverse communities. It's so important that the local stories we cover in our newscasts reflect the people who live here. That's why we've launched Action News Jack's Gets Real. To get real on issues like racism, housing challenges, and unequal access to health care. It's having difficult conversations, as well as celebrating people making a difference. This is Action News Jack's Gets Real. Real talk, real change. Get more in 2021 when you shop Arlington Toyota, like Arlington's 30-day exchange policy. That's 30 days to love your purchase or exchange it. How about a national lifetime warranty with unlimited time and miles? And that comes with your purchase. Plus, with Arlington's Credit for Everyone program, if your Beacon score is from 450 to 850, almost everyone is approved. With 4.7 out of 5 stars and over 11,000 reviews, it's time to get more in 2021 with Arlington Toyota. 10939 Atlantic Boulevard and online at arlingtontoyota.com. If you love golf or know somebody who does, you need to get this deal. Eight rounds of golf for less than 12 bucks per round, plus card fees with a Dream 18 golf card at great area golf courses like St. John's Golf and Country Club, Amelia River Golf Club, and Eagle Landing Golf Club. And this isn't just a golf card. Get a free shirt from Baker Sports, a free hat at Dome Hats, and a free smoothie from Smoothie King, plus 15% off any purchase at Palm Beach Autographs. Go to ESPN690.com to purchase the Dream 18 card for $95. Hundreds of dollars in savings and the perfect gift. For the ones who know that a little late is always too late. And that the clock doesn't stop just because you're missing a part. Granger offers supplies and solutions for every industry. And our Keep Stock Inventory Management Solutions help ensure you have the right stuff in the right place at exactly the right time. Visit Granger.com slash Keepstock to learn more. Granger for the ones who get it done. Does it feel like finding clothes in your fit is impossible? Tired of feeling overwhelmed with options that just aren't right? Let the experts at Stitch Fix do the shopping for you. At Stitch Fix, we make sure each piece is hand-selected for your life. So whether you're staying home or on the go, Stitch Fix has the answer for what to wear. We make it easy to find what works for you. Signing up takes just a few minutes, and styles are delivered directly to your door. Get started today at stitchfix.com. 
Stitch Fix, your style delivered. Hey, everybody, it's Brett Martineau from Action Sports Jacks. There's a good chance you have a smart speaker, so use it with the ESPN 690. Stay up to date on the Jags and all things sports by telling Alexa or Google to play ESPN 690. It's as easy as that. Make sure you listen weekdays 3 until 6 p.m. on ESPN 690. I think he's top-notch. I mean, at the, at the risk of being redundant, uh, I have not seen many guys that are as great a leader as he is of men. And in this business, that's huge. I mean, it's, it, you're never going to have to worry about Eric Bieniemy. Never. On the field, off the field. That is Andy Reid. And Andy Reid has been trumpeting that kind of message about Eric Bieniemy for the last couple of years now. Will anybody in an NFL office listen? I would say yes. There's six jobs open. He's been linked way back to Deshaun Watson in Houston as a, as a likely candidate there. The Jags have requested permission to interview him, according to reports today. And so this guy in this cycle, I believe, has to go, right, Austin? I mean, he has to be a head coach. Hey, what, what more can he do? Uh, I mean, this has to be the year for sure. You know, he's won a Super Bowl as offensive coordinator. He's had success in Kansas City. You know, Patrick Mahomes speaks for himself. So with that being said, I feel like there's nothing more to accomplish from a coordinator position uh, for Bienemy. So it's probably time for him to take the next step. Yeah, and so here's my question uh, quick on Bienemy. What, what, what people are wondering, is this all Andy Reid, right? Mm-hmm. It's what they wonder about Bill Belichick. It's what they run, wonder about Nick Saban. It's, it's a hard separation when you have a really, really good coach. And I think you could say the same for Pete Carroll and others. But what – how do you separate that, man? I mean, how do you know if you're if you're interviewing the enemy? Like, what do you need to hear that says, "Hey, yeah, this is about me too"? Because, I, like, I take Andy Reid's what he's saying as truth, but he's also trying to push his guy. You know, so you got to get through some of that mud. Yeah. Um, so you're telling me if you're asking Andy Reid why you should take the enemy? No, if or... I'm asking the enemy, I'm like, how do I know this is your offense? How do I know you're the innovator here? How do I know you're the guy that's calling all these things when you got Andy Reid, who's oh, obviously okay. been very good at that job for a long time from an offensive standpoint? Yeah, I mean, l- listen, like, obviously – you're going to have some sort of idea, right? I mean, you're just going to know if you do your due diligence, right? But if I'm if I'm sitting Eric Bieniemy down, right? I mean, the first question you have to ask is, what was your influence on, on this offense? And then a follow-up question could be, if you were running the entire show, which I think you were, but if you weren't running the entire show, what would you change about Andy Reid's offense? Right, there you right? Go. Because yeah. then, I mean, that, that's going to tell you all that you need to know about it. So um, there's definitely ways to find out. Uh, and I think if you're Bieniemy, like, you put it up on yourself and here we go again. We go back to the ego conversation. Like you want to branch out and prove like, yes, I came from an Andy Reed system, but there's more to me than that. Like, I just don't want to be labeled an Andy Reed guy. I'm my own person. I can call my own offense and I want to prove it to you. Yeah. I listen. Uh, if they announced Eric B as the coach, I'd be pretty excited. Absolutely. No, without a doubt. I mean, realistically, he's definitely, um, probably top two, uh, at the you know at the most top three for me to to be the coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, and you know I feel like I like Robert Sala a lot, but I could see my only hesitation is okay, who are you going to get in on offense? Who are you getting in on offense to help that young QB? Your offense, your identity is going to be your offense here over the next couple of years, in my opinion. So that'd be my only thing about Sala, where I'd say be enemy. Okay, I will. I'll, I'll believe everything Andy Reid's saying. But I know he's also an offensive guy that can work with this quarterback. He's seen what great looks like at the quarterback spot. So I love the idea that, hey, we got a special guest on the phone right now. Let's bring him in. And um, I want to introduce him to you. Sub Stewart. Oh, you know, uh, he, no, he man, might hey, be the he, fantasy champ, you, you, by the way. Yeah, Dr. You're, you're going to pull anything champ. over me. I knew this was coming. Thank you, thank you, Coos. Coos. What the heck, Justin? You're not I mean, supposed to do heck, that. what the heck, I hey, was, he doing? heard me telling you Stewart was I, on the I line. Heard Stewart was on the line. What do you want me to say? <laughs> Austin, explain yourself. You lost to Weber in the fantasy. This guy hasn't won anything in like a decade in fantasy. Yeah. Though he gives fantasy advice all the time. That, yeah. is, that is completely untrue, by the way. Listen, man. All right. I was talking all year, ta- talking a big game. Kyler Murray was my dude. And I had Josh Allen on the bench. And I knew Kyler Murray was not 100%. 
not making up excuses because, to be fair, the switch wouldn't have mattered. But I opted to go with Kyler Murray because I wanted to prove people wrong and say, even though this guy's hurt, even though he's probably playing the best defense in the league, I can still win a fantasy football championship with Kyler Murray. Now, first quarter, did his leg almost fall out, fall out of the socket? Probably. So that was a bad call on my part. Stewart beat me fair and square. Props to him. Um, I'm already scouting, you know, for, for next season. I already got my, my quarterback list that I like already. And Kyler Murray, it's been fun, but we'll see you later. Weber, how bad was yeah. it? How bad did you beat him? Uh, no, it was close. You know, we did a two-week two week championship. So I won the first week by nearly 30 points. He won the second week by 10. Yeah. Uh, I, I will say, though, this uh, was one of my, my best seasons in fantasy football ever. And I say that because I slept through the draft. Uh, <laughs> that, will, that will happen when, uh, you know, when we didn't have any money on it. It was only pride and and nobody reminded me that, you know, hey, we've got a fantasy draft at this time. So I actually slept through that bad boy. We auto-drafted. But the amount of moves I made from that point on is what propelled me to a championship season. And for that, I feel a certain level of accomplishment from the, the roster turning, the fact that my number one overall pick in the draft, which is just as hilarious because a guy who auto-drafts gets the number one overall pick, Christian McCaffrey did absolutely <laughs> nothing. He had three weeks that he played in the entire year. And despite these odds, I still persevered and put together a championship-worthy okay. roster over the course of the season. So, so, so here's the thing. I mean, you, you kind of told on yourself here, and that was that, that's your mistake. But first of all, don't ever think that money is more important than pride. Pride comes first, then the money. So you have the pride. Congratulations. Point number two. You didn't draft this thing. This was computer generated. This was an auto draft. So essentially, my ego is now boosted because I'm like, and I'm sure you know this guy, Stuart, I'm like Bobby Fischer right now. I, I might be the best in the world, and I'm taking on computers. I didn't beat the computer this time, but you better believe I'll see you next season. Uh, it was not the computer that you faced in the championship, my friend. If you look at the roster, a mere two, maybe three of those players in that final roster were on that auto draft team. That's the point. I'm taking these on ESPN screwed, computers, Brent. These are all true moves being made by yours truly, including a number of moves made in the final weeks to prevent you from picking up the proper players to come back and get a victory. Brent, I'm taking on soulless, mechanical, robotical computers from ESPN. They have no souls. They're straight killing machines. You know what? That killing machine got the best of me this year. It ain't going to happen again. Hey, kids, money over pride. We'll be back. Boss, boss, have you heard the latest about the ding-dong doorbell cameras? What, more employees spying on customers? Nope. Hackers again? No, boss, this time they had to recall over 350,000 video doorbells. Recall? What happened? A bunch of them caught fire. Whoa, unbelievable. It's one thing after another with them. Yeah. Notice you never hear that with Safe Touch's video cameras. Well, now you're just comparing a Bentley with a bumper car. Exactly. I just don't understand why any homeowner wouldn't go with Safe Touch. Yeah, their video monitoring's virtually hack proof. Oh, and here's a bonus. Safe touch cameras don't burst into flames. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> yeah, it's just a good thing not everyone knows about Safe Touch, because we gotta stick to the Crooks or Us Golden Rule. Stay, Stay away, away from, from Safe, Safe Touch, touch houses. houses. Yeah, don't gotta tell me twice. Crooks know to stay away from Safe Touch houses. Hi, I'm Lester Jackson, president of Safe Touch Security Systems. No one beats our technology or our price. Call Safe Touch today at 888-723-8682 or go to safetouch.com. State license number EF233. Happy holidays from the team at CGC Water. This holiday season, our gift to you is clean drinking water. A Kinetico system from CGC Water removes up to 99% of contaminants. That's clean. Right now, CGC Water is offering a free a200 reverse osmosis drinking water system with the purchase of a Kinetico Premier softener like the one we have at our home. If you're still not filtering your water, you are the filter. Schedule your free water test today and get peace of mind knowing your family's water is safe water. CGC is still taking extra precautions with in-home visits and continuing to follow CDC guidelines. Remember now, this is a limited time offer. A free A200 reverse osmosis drinking water system with the purchase of a Kinetico Premier Softener. Special holiday financing available for a limited time with approved credit. Call 904-552-1242 for details or visit cgcwater.com. Serving Northeast Florida and Southeast Georgia, CGC Water Treatment, your local independent Kinetico dealer. 
Have a happy and safe holiday season. Hi, it's Brian Kilmeade for Phil Aiken Home Team Keller Williams Realty. I'm talking with Greg and Gary about their recent home sale. Why did you call Phil Aiken? We called Phil Aiken because we had heard that his team will sell your house quickly and for more money than any of the other realtors in town. Tell us what happened. Phil Aiken and his A-team, they will make the process very easy. Sold in four days and got over asking price. Well, that's great. So how did you think they were able to sell it so fast? Because Phil has the buyers and they have the team that can get the job done quickly and stress-free. What would you tell a friend who is looking for a real estate agent to sell their home? Would I recommend Phil Aiken and the A-team? Absolutely. Well, the results speak for themselves, right? Phil Aiken and his team have the systems and will even guarantee to sell your home in writing or buy it himself. Yes, we got better results than we expected. Thanks, Gary. Friends, hire the agent with the buyers looking to buy a home right now? Call Phil Aiken. Call 500 Phil. That's 500 Phil or visit at philhasthebuyers.com. It's time for some straight talk. Look, we all drop our phones. It happens. You fumble it, crack it, splash it. Well, Straight Talk Wireless now offers this new Platinum Unlimited plan that includes phone protection. Just 65 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, and data. Plus 20 gigs of hotspot, 100 gigs of cloud storage, and more. All on the best network. Straight Talk Wireless. No contract. No compromise. See Mobile Protect terms and conditions at Assurion.com slash Straight Talk. Limitations and exclusions apply. It's, oh my God, the NBA, it almost is sacrosanct. I mean, people are on the ground ripping open testing kits. We all have it. It's no way we all don't have it. You knew that the direction of the entire 2020 year for the whole world just took a massive turn. 30 for 30 podcast presents March 11th, 2020. Available now, wherever you get your podcasts. No matter what you are driving, you can step up to luxury now at any of the Fields Auto Group dealerships in Jacksonville. Cadillac, Jaguar, Land Rover, Lexus, Mercedes-Benz, and Porsche. Yes, it's luxury for less at all Fields Auto Group locations in Jacksonville. Plus, you'll also be part of their exclusive Fields Amenities Program, where you will get complimentary loaners, car washes, and cafes. So whatever you're driving, see Fields first. Step up to luxury for less during this amazing opportunity. Visit FieldsAuto.com. Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 Anna Jar and Levine Studios. Anna Jar and Levine Accident Attorneys. Call 904 600 4000. That's 904 600 4000. ESPN 690. Jacksonville's home for ESPN Radio. The Max Kellerman Show. Patriots have nothing on offense, nothing on defense, just because they have Bill Belichick even without Cam Newton. They're two plays away. They're four and five right now. They're two plays away from being six and three with wins over the Dolphins, Raiders, and Ravens, who they've actually beaten. And the two close ones were the, were the Bills and the Seahawks. They're good. The Max Kellerman Show, weekdays at 2 Eastern on ESPN Radio. And now, watch exclusively on ESPN+. Plus. WOKV Jacksonville. Listen live everywhere you go on ESPN690.com. ESPN690, a Cox Media Group station. Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 Anna and Levine Studios. This is Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690 with Brent Martineau and Austin Lane. There's nothing exciting about being the number one draft pick when you're 1 in 15. It just means you suck. That guy didn't sound too excited at all either. Who is that guy? Is that from the call-in thinkers? Yeah. <laughs> Jaguars guy, fan? I know. <laughs> or Jets fan? I said this today. There's so much going on around here, and I love the buzz around it. That means people are talking about it. I got fake Twitter all over the place right now. Mm. Um, but I said today... I'm I'm a little tired of this one. Uh, obviously tired of a couple of things today on the show already. But I'm a little tired of, well, the Jags have been bad forever, so they're always going to be bad. I, I I just don't buy that. I, I think that's the epitome of lazy. Because, first of all, I'll give you an example of a bunch of teams that, sure, haven't been able to turn it around. I'll give you a bunch of teams that have been able to turn it around. Yeah. And that's sports. You know, it, it's cyclical like that. I mean, shoot. Patriots did it in the most dominant way ever, maybe, ever. Pittsburgh Steelers are, are not far from this, too, if you go way back in their history. But more modern, again, this guy grew up in New England. 
Patriots were a joke. Like, Patriots were a bigger joke than people in Jacksonville want to think the Jags are. Mm-hmm. I mean, nobody went. It was freezing cold. It was an awful stadium. It were fights all over. That's I, I always say this. That's what I remember about going to Patriots games is seeing grown men fight each other. Like, that's that. there was a fight, like, in every section <laughs> because it was cold and people were miserable and they hated life and they hated the Patriots and they just kept getting – there was no hope or whatever. Mm. So – and then, obviously, you know what happened in the last 20 to 25 years. So they're the greatest example of it. But, but even beyond yeah. that, like, I, you don't have to show me proof of it. I just think, like, what fun is it to sit here and say, well, Jags, uh, they'll probably make a bad move at GM. They'll probably make a bad move at head coach. And Trevor Lawrence probably won't work out because you're the Jags. Well, that's one heck of a way to to live. I mean, no, but yeah. <laughs> but, but listen, Brent, some people are just miserable, man. Yeah. And, and, but they have every right to be. Like, even, like, listen, the Jaguars aren't the first team um, to have a decade-long run where they've been bad. You just mentioned the Patriots, and that's that's a great example. But at the same time, like, did the Patriots lose Jalen Ramsey? Did the Patriots lose Yannick Ngakwe? Did, did the Patriots have Tom Coughlin say he expects 100% participation? Did the Patriots say have, like, you know, whatever the most grievances in NFL history for a season? No. So, like, there's a difference there between being bad and being bad but also being embarrassing. And, like, I think in terms of the optics, fans are embarrassed and they're frustrated. Now, you have every right to be. Now, I'm going to go on the side of, listen, I understand it's been bad for the past decade, but let's have some hope now, right? Things are turning around, hopefully turning around for the better. So you have the right to be happy and you have the right to be optimistic. But I get the other side where fans are still kind of fed up and said, look at what our team's been able to accomplish the past couple years. Yeah, I I get it. I, I get that. But I think that's why there's also this buzz around town that we can all feel. Because I feel like there is hope, right? Even if you're, okay, that is the evidence the last 10 years. And by the way, there's also evidence of the first five, six, seven years of this franchise being very good, and nobody would anticipate that when your franchise is born, you know? And so that was unexpected. And, of course, this latest run of 11 out of 12 years, I would say, is unexpected because nobody plans for that. And there are the Cleveland Browns and the Detroit Lions and the Bills and and all these different um you know, franchises that have just not been able to get it done. But there is a buzz in Jacksonville that just feels like, hey, maybe this is it. You know, this is it. And this feels like there's there's something here that hasn't been here before. Not just this, uh, we hope <laughs> this might get turned around, but, man, we think this might get turned around. You know, it's more that. It's more of an exclamation point than it is a question mark. And part of that is because you have something that you've never had. And that is that number one overall pick with a possible franchise changing quarterback in play. That marriage has never happened in all the bad off seasons of the Jags. No, I understand that. But like, look at it from a defeated, miserable fans perspective. Like for the past decade, they've been in a relationship with the Jacksonville Jaguars. He had one good year. And then the other nine years were horrible. You wanted to get out, but you couldn't because you're, you're, you're committed. You're pot committed to that relationship. So when something better comes along now and things start to turn around, it's just not easy to say, oh, okay, well, the first 10 years, I mean, it was what it was, but now I'm excited. Now it's like, hey, let's go to Ruth Chris. Let's have a date. Like, no, it's not how it works, man. <laughs> Some people, it takes time to get over those things. And for the past decade, you've had a lot to nitpick about. You've had a lot to complain about. People just need time, Brent. Time heals all wounds. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, I will say this too. Uh, you know, you've got to prove it. Jacksonville, the franchise, the the team of it, they have to prove it, and they're going to wear the, this new group. Trevor Lawrence, unfortunately, whoever the coaches, they well, I always say this, they'll wear the last twelve years of this angst of the fan base that has not been able to win. That's built up, and they can't do anything about it. It might be game one for Trevor Lawrence in September, but it's game one hundred and sixty something of losing for yeah. the Jacksonville Jaguars fans. That's just built in. A guy that knows a little bit about that mm, emotional roller coaster joins us now. Jason Fitz from ESPN Radio Spain and Fitz, 7 o'clock on ESPN all across the country. Hey, uh, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Hope your holidays were great, man. Well, they were, and I was thinking of you guys. So I'm just going to I'm gonna lay myself right. I was just listening to the conversation, but I was thinking of you guys uh, when I was watching the college football semifinal game. I was watching in my house. Mike Golick Jr., we were sitting socially distanced watching the game <laughs> in the house, and uh, – I made my case, and Mike changed my mind, and I think it's important to, to hear this for a second because I've often said for the Jets, for example, that their, their roster is so dumpster fire. I don't care if Mahomes is a quarterback. They still only win four games. So 
trade the pick, get as many as you can, and, and let somebody else take on Trevor Lawrence. That's been my lo- logic for a long time with the top pick, which you guys now hold. And Mike said, look, you're not wrong. You can find a quarterback not at the top overall pick. In fact, if you look right now at the rankings, most of the top rankings involve quarterbacks that are not number one overall picks. The difference is Trevor Lawrence is the closest thing to a sure thing that we've seen since Andrew Luck. And that's Mike's take, and he's right. You know, it changed my mind, and I looked at it and said, you know what? You're right. For all the crapshoot that the draft is, it is rare that we have a quarterback coming out that everybody consensus looks at and says, this guy is not just a guy, he is the guy. And he's a generational D guy that we will bank everything on. We forget that there were question marks around Patrick Mahomes. We forget that there were question marks even around Deshaun Watson, right? Like, it is rare that you can look. Even Baker Mayfield, pick number one, still had questions. There is not a single question mark from any person about Trevor Lawrence and that is why Jags fans today should feel better than they have ever felt because they're going to draft somebody that universally every college football expert and every NFL expert believes is a franchise superstar quarterback that can change the tide of a generation. Jason Fitz, uh, hey, hey, yeah, chills, and everybody loves to hear that, and I think that's important to hear because that's where we're at. It's yeah, we've been through all seasons. They've had money before. They've had young teams before. We can see a little young talent. They've had new coaches before, and that energizes people sometimes. But we never had a number one pick with the perfect marriage and perfect timing of a guy coming out that might be a game changer in the entire league, and and we're gonna run with that until that's proven otherwise. But I think you come from an interesting spot because. I think the Raiders, and you're a Raiders guy, but the Raiders have taken some steps. But obviously they didn't take enough of a step this year. And in part because there are still many doubters, even after a good season from Derek Carr, there's not this full faith in that guy being the guy, right? No, a thousand percent. And look, the number one thing that a quarterback gives you is hope. That's it. But when you talk about hope, look at Chargers fans today. They're, They're enamored with Justin Herbert. To which I say, remember in 2016 when Derek Carr was an MVP candidate? Like, you can see one good year, you know, and, and then you look at, you, you can look at Baker Mayfield, uh, everybody after his rookie year. This guy's going to be the guy, a sensation. And then the next year, he was on garbage, and suddenly, oh, he's not the guy. So, yeah, I think the difference is when you've got your quarterback, then you believe it's up to your front office to maximize everything else that's around him and figure out a way to get it done because you have hope. That is the thing that opens. That's a window that opens. And, you know, and hope comes from two different perspectives. Look at Ryan Tannehill. He was supposed to be hope, and then apparently he wasn't because Adam Gase tried to ruin him. And then he became hope for the Titans. So you've got to see sustained greatness to have hope. And that's part of why I think Jags fans have hope is because Trevor Lawrence has given us sustained greatness at a level at the college level that had people clamoring for him to try and change the rules so that he could come out after his freshman year. I mean, think about that. When you when you try and find a hole in Trevor Lawrence's game, the fact is there isn't one. So that's going to give you a level of hope coming into the the season and coming into what's going to be built over the next three to five years for the Jacks. Also, guys, let's look at the timing. I, I'm just hijacking this whole segment. But let's, let's look at the timing of the AFC South because – uh, I, I'm incredibly familiar with the Titans after all the years in Nashville. Uh, you're looking at a Titans team that's putting a ton of wear on the tires for Derrick Henry. And Derrick Henry is special right now. But there will be a limit to how many more years he's special. So I believe that the Titans are in a two- to three-year window right now that they've got to maximize because this is it for them. For the Colts, they haven't been able to figure out long-term what their quarterback situation is. They have a very talented roster, but they also have an offensive line that uh, hasn't necessarily been as good this year as it was last. They're in this little window right now. The Jags have this great opportunity of having not only the number one overall pick, but a ton of money to spend. And they've also got the window that comes with that rookie contract that gives them time. I mean, I think even if it takes Trevor Lawrence three years to become Trevor Lawrence the world beater that nobody can stop that is exactly when the rest of the division should be falling off and all of a sudden you've got this great opportunity for the Jags to go into an era of dominance that's what you've got to believe right now well Jason and you just said it you know it, it could take two years it could take three years it could take one year we'll see but when we're talking about these first round quarterbacks exactly if you're a fan or even better if you're a GM or a head coach like how long do you give these guys because you just brought up Sam Darnold and Adam Gase now let's be honest Adam Gase is more detrimental to quarterbacks than a 225 pound bench press. It's just, it's a fact. He doesn't help the quarterback position whatsoever. But have you seen enough out of Sam Darnold where it's like, we got to move on, or do you want to see more? What are your thoughts about Tua Tunga Viola? Yeah, well, and see, this is where it gets really interesting because. 
Kyler Murray was the case study in moving on quickly. And, you know, I've, the more I've talked to the Grazianos and Field Yates of the world and, and asked where that logic stands, the more that that is true. Like, we are in a world now where how long do you have to prove that you're it at quarterback? You have two years. And that's crazy. You know, I, I always go back to these music analogies. But I remember years ago reading an interview where Bono was talking about the fact that you two never would have made it if they were a band today because it took them three records to figure out who they were as a band, whereas now you get three singles, and if the third one isn't big, you're done. And that's where the NFL is, is a world now a quarterback. I mean, uh, if, if Tua – I believe that Tua can be great, and especially coming off of the injuries that he's come off of and trying to figure out the game with no offseason, I still believe that Tua is the type of quarterback – you can absolutely bank on, but if, if, are the Dolphins going to absolutely pass on any? The Dolphins wouldn't pass on Trevor Lawrence if he was there. I mean, if they had a shot at Trevor Lawrence instead of Tua, I believe that they would move on in a heartbeat. So it's a reminder that you've got to go like right away when you think you've got a better guy. The one thing that separates Trevor Lawrence is his body of work so far is so pristine that I do believe that if he came out and struggled, the concept wouldn't be that Trevor Lawrence is the problem. The concept would be that the coaching staff is the problem. Now you're going to get a divisive camp, too, because you just brought up, obviously, the Arizona situation with Rosen and moving on. But also, I think some people now will bring up the Josh Allen situation in Buffalo, where they were patient and waited. And now look at the way he's playing. So uh, there's two different camps, I think, when it comes to two. Jason Fitz with us here on Action Sports Shacks on ESPN 690. Uh, you can listen to Spain and Fitz, 7 o'clock, all across the country on ESPN Radio. Uh, this is uh, – I've got to ask you about Urban Meyer. What, what's your take on Urban Meyer to the NFL game? Uh, do you have a, a favorite for a job you think might fit with Trevor Lawrence and Jacksonville of all the names that are thrown out there? It, it might be the best pool of candidates that I've seen for an opening, at least here in Jacksonville, that I can remember. Well, I mean, if I could cherry pick any candidate to work with any quarterback in the world right now, it's Eric Bieniemy, And that's not a hot take. Everybody knows how great Eric Bieniemy is, and he's going to have his choice of jobs when he takes a job. The first thing I would do if I'm Jacksonville, by the way, is I would go offer a blank check to whoever Trevor Lawrence tells me he wants a blank check offered to <laughs> on the Clemson coaching staff. I want to bring in somebody that knows Trevor Lawrence. I said that at the time. Like, the fact that Joe Brady, the passing coordinator from LSU, has worked for the last year for Carolina instead of Cincinnati was an epic fail to me. So, you know, to me, it's about the, the people you can bring in to make Trevor Lawrence comfortable. You want to bring in somebody that you know can maximize what an offense can do. As for Urban Meyer... I, I hope that his health is 100%. Let me be abundantly clear on that. Uh, even with that knowledge, even if they came in today and said his health is 100%, we have to at least acknowledge that the reason he's walked away from jobs in the past is because when his teams lose, his health is not 100%. Wherever he goes, he's likely to lose a few games, at least in the beginning. I would be genuinely concerned about making an investment in Urban Meyer not knowing if that investment is really for one year or for five years. I know that in today's world, you never know anything, but the last thing you want to do is get your quarterback in a situation where you hire a coach who comes in and a year in decides, man, these health issues are still there. I still can't handle the anxiety and pressure and stress for my health that comes with losing football games. I'm out. And now all of a sudden you have a revolving door at quarterback. We all know that that's the number one thing at the NFL that will kill a young quarterback is a revolving door of coaches and play callers. So uh, if I'm the Jags, I'm taking somebody that I know will be with my organization for six years and is going to live this entire first contract with Trevor Lawrence so that we have continuity from the day that he walks in the building. Talking to Jason Fitz from ESPN. Jason, we got one last thing for you. Now, usually it's going to be a game, right? And I've had a lot of time to think about a game for you. But you know what? No games today. Strictly business. Uh, and this is a little more personal to me. I've had a lot of time to dwell on this. So you're a Raiders fan. You're, you're a diehard Raiders fan. And I respect the fandom. So before I answer, you know, before I ask this question, I want you to really think about this question. All right. I, I, I want you to construct it and give me a good answer. You ready for this? Yep. Why is Josh Jacobs making the Pro Bowl over James Robinson? <laughs> Brand power matters. I mean, uh, you know, because they're sorry that they didn't give Josh Jacobs more of a, uh, more love for offensive rookie of the year last year. Uh, mm. You know, jo Josh, Josh is a talented, talented running back. I take sure. nothing away from that. Oh, he, is, he was yeah. not as good this year. He was not as good this year as he was last year. He took, he got dinged up week one. I don't think he was ever healthy. I don't think it was ever really good for him the way it should be. So, you know, he's in there because 
he was drafted in the first round and because everybody knew his name coming into the season and because he was on fantasy football lineups and because the Pro Bowl was a joke. So all of those things together are why. Uh, and there's no better reason than that. Politics. You yeah. go on politics, yeah. Jason Fitz that's, that's from true. ESPN Radio, Spain and Fitz, 7 o'clock all across the country. Hey, man, Happy New Year. Good to have you back, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much, guys, and Happy New Year. You bet. Right on, uh, man. Jason Fitz. You know, I, I, I could have spent another 10 minutes talking to Fitz. There's so much going on uh, right now in terms of the Heisman Trophy, which we'll get into a little bit, college football playoff. And, by the way, there's a report out, Brett McMurphy saying that there are concerns at Ohio State about COVID, and they could potentially, they're, they're looking into the idea of postponing the national championship game a week. For now, it's still on next Monday, but they could postpone it a week based on positive tests with COVID-19 at Ohio State, which is interesting if true, or if they do, because when does that stop? Austin would be something I would ask. Like, what if the next week Alabama has 15 guys out? You know, yeah. and what do they postpone it to the Super Bowl weekend? I, mean, what I, is, I don't. What do you do there? I I don't know how many times you could do that. And what's the cutoff of okay, that's too many guys that have tested. Uh, is it the normal under the scholarship limit? I think was like under 50. Yeah. Um, so it, it's something to keep an eye on. Brett McMurphy reporting that in the last little bit. What the heck is going on in the state of Ohio right now? Because like the Cleveland Browns have 17 players right now on the COVID-19 reserve list, including some coaches. So don't, don't you feel for the Cleveland fan a little bit? Like, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to like, there's some things that you can't say around here, right? Like you can't root. You, you definitely better not say anything nice about the Titans around here. You better not say anything nice about Jeff Fisher around here. Uh, and, and, and more. But I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I actually feel good for the Bills fans right now and the Browns fans. But now you think about the Browns fans, they make it to the playoffs, they got all this going for them, and now they're not going to have their head coach. They're mm -hmm. not going to have some of their key players. I mean, tough tough shakes. I mean, even two weeks ago, and of course Jacksonville benefited from it, but they didn't have their whole receiving core, and they had to sweat out the final week because of it. It ain't easy being a Browns fan right now. Also. No, no. I mean, you go from complete adulation and celebration to are we going to have a, enough people to feel the team? So it's definitely rough to be a Browns fan right now. But, hey, you guys are still in the playoffs after a long run, so you should be happy about that. I just don't get what's happening in Cleveland. It's winter there. Like, what are people doing right now where everyone's getting COVID-19? Like, aren't you guys indoors? Isn't there snow on the ground? As far as to answer your question Bundling with the up. Yeah, maybe. Um, <laughs> as far as the Ohio State game's concerned, Listen, like, even if it was one player, but that player is Justin Fields, like, then you put an asterisk next to that game. And the last thing college football needs right now is an asterisk next to any game. So I think as long as you have the stars, for the most part, <laughs> healthy, as messed up as that sounds, you're going to be okay. But if you can't even feel the team right now, you do what you got to do because college football, they have to play this game. We have to see who the best team in the country is. That's how sports work. Heisman Trophy is tonight. Oddly enough, it's like not even on my radar, but it's tonight. And a couple of other things that I thought Fitz touched on that sparked my thought process going about Urban Meyer and, and any coaching candidate here in Jacksonville. Uh, we continue the Jags talk, uh, some NFL talk, and Heisman conversation with a local, Mac Jones, and of course a Gator, Kyle Trask. They went from heavy favorites to... Maybe also Rams in this competition. I'll give you the odds breakdown on the way on ESPN 690. Action Sports Jacks with Brent Martineau on ESPN 690 is brought to you by Best Bet Jacksonville and Orange Park. Now, the first alert forecast on ESPN 690. Mostly sunny today. The afternoon high will be pleasant in the mid to upper 60s. Again, cool tonight, dropping to near 40. Join me beginning at 5 p.m. for CBS 47 at Fox 30. Action News Jacks for the First Alert Weather Center. I'm TV meteorologist Mike Burrish. The Weather Center is brought to you by Beards Diamonds, where you get the lowest diamond price guaranteed or your money back. Hey, know when the best time to buy Christmas lights or artificial Christmas trees is? December 26th. Off-season rates are for real. It's the same for air conditioners. Believe it or not, January isn't a hotbed month for air conditioner sales because no one's AC is breaking down in this weather. So why am I telling you all this? Because I've already done all the extensive technical and customer service training for my AC techs. 
I hire the best and train them even better. That's why they can fix what others can't. And part of my promise to them is a steady 40 hours a week, 52 weeks a year. And right now, they ain't busy. I'm paying them like I promised, but I'd sure rather be sending them out on install jobs. So if your system's older or you'd like to upgrade it, now's the time. By mid to late February, we'll be busy again, scheduling and running spring tune-ups for all our loyal Club Griffin members. But now, now's the time for a deal. So ring us at GriffinService.com. License number 125 Boss, hit the gas! What's going on? You were supposed to check to see if that house had anyone home. Now their porch is on fire. Boss, I didn't do it. The ding-dong doorbell camera just burst into flames and started melting. Oh, so it's true. Those things are fire hazards. Yeah, and now we know another big difference between those cheap ding-dong doorbell cameras and a safe touch security system. Well, yeah, with SafeTouch, homeowners don't have to worry about their video cameras getting hacked. Or employees spying on customers. Or bursting into flames. Uh-oh, fire department's coming, boss. Time to go. I'm way ahead of you. By the way, your eyebrows are completely gone. Oh, well, maybe it's an improvement. Just so I know you still got your senses, recite the Crooks R Us golden rule again. Stay away from SafeTouch houses. Don't worry, it's burned into my brain. Crooks know to stay away from safe touch houses. Hi, I'm Lester Jackson, president of Safe Touch Security Systems. No one beats our technology or our price. Call Safe Touch today at 888-723-8682 or go to safetouch.com. State license number EF233. We should always be looking at our finances, but 2020 made my family take an even closer look, a bit more of a deeper dive, and it might have done the same for you, even into the world of retirement. Although that's a bit down the road for me, it might be closer for you, and your plan should already be under a microscope and you have to lean on the experts to help guide the right plan. My friend Mike Lester with Talent Wealth Management is the perfect partner. He will provide a complimentary analysis and a plan for you. Call him at 904-515-5000 or visit guardingyournesteg.com. That's 904-515-5000 or guardingyournesteg.com. Mike will give you the guidance you need as retirement gets closer. He can help you convert company plans to private plans, a move that might give you higher returns and more options. You've earned the money. Now make sure you are ready for whenever retirement will be. Call Mike Lester at Talon Wealth Management, 904-515-5000. That's 904-515-5000. Or visit guardingyournesteg.com. Nothing is certain except death and taxes. And your appliance is breaking down as soon as they're out of warranty. At Atlantic Coast Appliance, we can't help with the first two, but we've got the third one covered. Our factory trained and certified technicians have been repairing appliances for more than 35 years with a 90-day warranty on parts and labor and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. For quality repair at a price that's fair, trust Atlantic Coast Appliance. AtlanticCoastAppliance.com. That's AtlanticCoastAppliance.com. It is the home of the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18, and make it your home course as well. The Golf Club at Southampton in North St. Johns County, located off County Road 210. It's family-owned and operated. Southampton is a fun, fun course to play, and the Golf Club at Southampton offers club membership programs starting at just $79. With its elite practice facilities and player-friendly golf course design, it'll be your gateway to a great time with the family or with your buddies. For information on the membership programs, call the Golf Club at Southampton, 904-287-PLAY. Again, it's 904-287-PLAY. I'm Action News Jack's Tanika Hughes, and one of the great things about living in Jacksonville is our diverse communities. It's so important that the local stories we cover in our newscasts reflect the people who live here. That's why we've launched Action News Jack's Gets Real. To get real on issues like racism, housing challenges, and unequal access to health care. It's having difficult conversations, as well as celebrating people making a difference. This is Action News Jack's Gets Real. Real talk. Real chain. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Austin Lane from Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. Smart speakers are becoming part of everyday life, so why not use it to listen to the radio? Tell Alexa, Google Home, or any other speaker to play ESPN 690. Give it a shot weekday afternoons from 3 to 6. Austin Lane. Are we on right now or not? Like our screen? I guess we're good. Brent Martino. Yeah, you got to okay. go all the way. Yeah, we're back. Thanks for your concern. You're welcome. Uh... <laughs> Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. We were really focused on this game, which I'm really proud of everybody just locking into this. <laughs> and we've, we've won a lot of games, and a lot of people are going uh, to get awards. Um, so it's just part of the team effort. And then obviously the most important thing is not letting that be a distraction for our next game because the, the next game is the most important game, and that's where we want to be. And we're finally here, and we got to score one more point than the other team. So um, that's kind of our goal. 
That is Mac Jones, quarterback for Alabama. Quarterback in the national title game coming up. Undefeated for the Crimson Tide. Crazy numbers. I think it's four 400-yard games. That hasn't happened before at Alabama. The deep ball has been a thing. Devontae Smith's been unbelievable. And also, he hails from Jacksonville. And I think that's pretty cool and probably not talked about enough right now. I know Kyle Trask obviously has put up some tremendous numbers. Those guys were going back and forth in the conversation. Now, all of a sudden, Devontae Smith is the favorite by a mile, it appears, to win the Heisman Trophy. And it's Heisman Trophy night tonight. Welcome to a recap of 2020, right? Yeah. <laughs> that the Heisman <laughs> Trophy is being awarded on a Tuesday night yeah. in January. So bizarre that it's just not even like on my radar. My, my clock doesn't tick that way uh, when it comes to the Heisman. But uh, it, I, I don't think we can understate the story of Mac Jones. I, I think it's really cool. And while I kind of say to, to the masses, it's almost like an out of nowhere story. It, it, we talked to his family last month and, you know, Max put in a ton of work that I would say this isn't as surprising to people close to Mac Jones. But again, on the outside, look it in. It's a heck of a story. And what I think sometimes people lose sight of when you're talking about the sensational athlete, Austin, you played the game. You're still an MMA fighter. What people lose sight of when you talk about that 1% athlete that makes it to professional sports or a top flight athlete in college Sure, they're gifted. Mm -hmm. Sure, he's around a great program and great coaches and great players in, in, in Alabama. But don't dismiss the amount of work that went in to make him where he's at right now. The one thing people lose sight of LeBron James, who's one of the greatest of all time, is how much that guy works yeah. to stay at the top of his game. And to me, that's like I got two kids in high school, man, baseball and softball, and they're just trying to make a high school team. But that's the thing that uh, I guess as a parent you can kind of take and you, you, you show them the Mac Jones story, the Kyle Trask story, the story of really anybody that, that's made it at a high level in sports. Mm -hmm. that, but it's that, yeah, they might have some God-given ability, but they busted their tail, man. And the story of Mac Jones and what he did in the pandemic to make his game even better going into 2020 and to see it pay off, I think that's the cool part of these kind of stories. So uh, a big congrats to Mac Jones, who's a finalist tonight for the Heisman Trophy. No, it, it's awesome. Uh, so right now I'm looking up. Devontae Smith is uh, minus 1,000 to win it. Mac Jones coming in at plus 500. So all signs point to Devontae Smith, but we shall see. You brought up a great point, you know, of, of I guess, you know, just the, the mindset that it takes to get to where Mac Jones is right now. And especially the quarterback position, which I always say is the most important position in all professional sports, but it's so much more mental, right? Like when I was coming up as a defensive end, like I had height, right? I had decent speed. So like immediately that set me apart from everybody else. And don't get me wrong. Like if you're trying to break down a quarterback, obviously, you know, the height can come into play. Uh, the, the arm strength comes into play, but it's mostly about your mindset, your decision making and getting better. And that's what Mac Jones has done. Like there's a, listen, there's probably a million guys that are Mac Jones size, right? But what separates Mac Jones from the other quarterbacks in college football right now is the work ethic, is the mindset, is the decision making. So it's a testament to just how far he's come. Obviously, he's minded his time um, and now he's reaping the benefits. And obviously, you know, he's, he's an underdog to win it tonight. And even if he doesn't win it, the fact that he's even in the category right now of one of the best college football players in the entire country, that's something you can always take home with you. Yeah, and, and he should. I mean, it's, and, and by the way, he's going to be maybe a first-round pick. I've seen mock drafts that have Mac Jones, like whatever the Patriots are picking, like 15th overall. Mm. And again, if I'm being honest, I think that's a little bit high. I'd be surprised at that. I don't think he can get wrapped up in that. But we're looking at Kyle Trask and Mac Jones as that, that next tier of quarterbacks that are probably going to be picked between, ah, I would say, pick 20 and pick 64. Like sometime between the late first round and the second round mm -hmm. would be my guess. Like if if you had to bet, would Kyle Trask and Mac Jones be gone by the time the third round starts? I would say absolutely. No, without a doubt, because listen, there's a lot of teams right now that aren't really comfortable with the quarterback position. So um, I definitely can see Trask and Mac Jones going by the third round. Uh, here, by the way, I want to add to your numbers a little bit. Okay. On uh, we get these odds uh, sent to us. And so they might be a little bit different than um, than the the ones you're 
sharing. But it's at sports betting mm-hmm. um, is where these odds are from. And so I get these all the time. And, and I, the odds are just like you said. It's like out of control for um, – uh, like what do you say minus a thousand or something Smith Correct. this one actually Smith is minus 1500 oh, wow. Mac yeah. Jones minus 500 to finish second Trevor Lawrence projected to finish third which means Trask who people wanted to give the award to and by the way I don't blame him for that a month ago is predicted to finish fourth and he might have the best numbers of any of them yeah so here I'm looking Kyle Trask is plus 7500 my goodness I mean this was a Trask Jones conversation Two weeks ago, Mm -hmm. Ah, maybe two and a half. And then here comes Devontae Smith. And I think part of the reason, part of the this uh, all of a sudden wave for him to be the favorite to win the Heisman is not only because he's been incredible, but I think partly because we don't really know how to separate the Trask and Jones seasons. And we don't really know how to kind of quantify Trevor Lawrence because – he had a very good season, mm-hmm. but he wasn't on pace with the numbers and accolades of these guys, and he missed a couple of games because of COVID, so then you factor in the career award part of it. So we don't really know what the heck to do with the quarterback, so he said, you know what, screw the quarterbacks. Let's give it to Devontae Smith yeah. because, quite frankly, that might be the best way to do it, not only this year because it's the way the award's supposed to be handed out. Devontae Smith looks like the best player in college football to me. Uh, I think you can make a great case for these guys being finalists and Heisman candidates. But the best player in college football that I've watched with my eyes, I think, in 2020 has been Devontae Smith. And so I think that's why. I'm going to give you this, Austin. You ready? Hit me with it. Uh, I, I asked the odds guy who sent me that email. I said, can you tell me what they were before the season on Trask, Jones, and Smith? And so he, he sent me an email back on January 14th which obviously was way back before the season started. Mac Jones was 10-1. to 1. Trask was 16-1, to 1, which actually was a little higher than I even thought. Mm-hmm. Smith wasn't even on the board <laughs> in January. Wasn't yeah. on the board. Yeah. Back on August 18th, Jones was still 16, now 16-1 to 1 instead of 10-1. to 1. Trask was 25-1. to 1. And Devontae Smith was now on the board at 50-1. to 1. Wow. And he is now minus 1,500 to win the Heisman Trophy. The moral of that story, what I'm trying to tell you is, take a look at the 2021 Heisman Trophy odds and go way down the list and try to find somebody that might win the Heisman Trophy that's not expected. No, without a (laughs) doubt, especially at the wide receiver position where that doesn't happen a lot. So um, he's definitely an outlier in that. You know, I think Devontae Smith deserves to win it with all due respect to Mac Jones because, like, I mean, listen, I, I watched the, you know, college football semifinal, and it seemed like any time Devontae Smith got the ball, he was gone, right? And you can't say that about a lot of players um, in college football. So I think he definitely deserves it. I think, you know, the whole Kyle Trask thing, I'm going to like the results if, if Smith or maybe if even Mac Jones wins because it shows that it's not exactly a stat-driven award still. Right, because yes, Kyle Trask had some great stats, and you can't take that away from him. But the team wasn't the best team in college football, right? And I'm glad to see that still means something, because at the end of the day, like even in the NFL, like do you know who who led the league this year in passing yards, Brent? Uh, for the NFL passing yards, I want to say, uh, is it um, Josh Allen? Nope, it's Deshaun Watson. But, okay. but nobody talks about him. Why? Because, well, let's be honest. He played on a pretty crappy team. So he's got the stats to say, well, man, this guy should be up there in the ranks of, of Aaron Rodgers, uh, Patrick Mahomes. But we don't include him in that conversation, at least I don't, because, well, let's be honest, Houston Texans not that good this year. I feel like it's kind of the same for the Heisman Trophy. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, the Florida Gators, that they played in the Cotton Bowl, it was still a, a decent season, but obviously they failed to go to the playoff and expectations weren't reached. They finished the season 8-4. and four. And I think, and I get it, the last game doesn't matter because the votes are already in. But if we're talking about Kyle Trask getting the Heisman Trophy after that game against Oklahoma, regardless of the excuses that Dan Mullen wants to pull out of his you-know-what, um, I would have a bad taste in my mouth of Kyle Trask winning the Heisman after he threw three interceptions. Yeah, I, I think you're right. You know, I mean, I, I think Trask has lost a little bit of it. The loss to LSU was really devastating. I think he, he acquitted himself nicely against Alabama. Uh, and by the way, the votes were then by in after yeah. the Alabama game. And so this latest bowl game didn't matter, but certainly the wave 
Uh, and I wonder if that's just Vegas playing around with that emotion because, remember, the votes were already in. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do think they're going to pull away from each other. Hey, I'm going to give you more odds, okay? Um, you like Vegas? Do you believe Vegas, Austin? Are okay. you a Vegas believer? Okay. Are you? Uh, I'm a Vegas believer. Um, yeah. W- w- when it comes to the lines, yes. When it comes to the good time of the city, well, I'm at bachelor party there, and I don't re- really remember much, so I'll get back to you on that one. I've never been to Vegas. Yeah. Um, but I think Vegas is smart. Okay. Vegas knows their stuff. Okay. Vegas, I don't know if they're right more than they're wrong. Oh, Brent, the house always wins. Yeah. Rule they, number one of Vegas. The house always wins, it, it, and they really know how to – they know how to tug at you, you know? Yeah, yeah. They know what you're going to fall for. <laughs> they know you're going to always pick <laughs> the Patriots, bets. right? <laughs> yeah. And so you're going to take the Patriots to cover all the time with Belichick and Brady, but then they're going to get you on that <laughs> little back door. They know that that I'm going to pick Alabama to beat Notre Dame by more than 20, and they're going to dominate the game, and then freaking Notre Dame in the last 45 seconds is going to backdoor cover mm-hmm. on a plunge from one yard out by Ian Book and cost me my bowl pool. But, but but who's keeping track? You are, yeah. obviously. All Sorry, right, are you back. all right, man? You good? Back. Well, that's a lot of – that's a pretty good chunk of change um, in that bowl pool. I thought we can't talk about this type play. of stuff. Uh, why, so. why do I get yelled at for this type of stuff, but you just let it flow like the rivers of the Mississippi? <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> will Urban Meyer be coaching in 2021? Oh, where will Urban Meyer be coaching in 2021? Okay. Okay, hit me with it. Not coaching an NFL team, plus 150. Those are pretty – that's not bad still. Like, that's almost even. Okay. Almost. Any other NFL team, plus 2,800. The okay. New York Jets, plus 2,800. The Jacksonville Jaguars, minus 220. Mm. So, I kind of Somebody went knows something. Order. But Jacksonville Jaguars are minus 220. Not coaching an NFL team is plus 150. What's interesting here is they didn't put the Chargers on here because I would think the job for Meyer is between, if he's going back, is three things for Meyer. Am I going back in? Am I coaching the Jaguars? Or am I coaching the Chargers? Like, if I was Urban Meyer, that's what I'd be thinking. Yeah. Am I going to go? And if I am, which job am I taking? And those are the two that I'm flirting with, and that's it. Uh, That's it. So minus 220 that Urban Meyer will be coaching the Jags in 2021. And... Uh, not coaching an NFL team is plus 150. So uh, still, you know, odds are pretty close on that front. Who will be the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars for game one of the 2021-2022 mm, season? This is interesting. Urban Meyer is minus 230 in this one. Eric Bieniemy comes in next at plus 750. Wow. So if you don't, which I'm kind of a this guy, like I'm not convinced Urban Meyer is going to come back to coach. Yeah. So the odds are pretty good. That you could take the enemy at plus 750. That's a nice payday. Mm. Brian Dable, who I haven't even seen the request an interview for yet, unless I missed that, plus 750. Mm-hmm. Jim Caldwell's plus 950. Robert Sala, plus 750. Marvin Lewis, plus 1400. That's a sneaky, sleepy, good one right there. And uh, I'm not even going to go over these other guys. Byron <laughs> Leftwich, by the way, is plus 1800. But I, I, I don't think any of the other guys, like Bill O'Brien, Joe Brady, uh, hey, well, well, excuse me? Mike Kafka, Bill Bro- Byron Leftwich, Lincoln Riley. I, I don't even think he's interested anymore. Jason Garrett. I don't Brent, think those guys what are. Is, what is Bill O'Brien? Uh, Bill O'Brien's plus 1800. Somehow not the enough. same as Joe Brady. Not enough. And somehow the same as Byron Leftwich. Not enough. I'm going to need at least a plus 25,000. Listen, if you gave me a $100 bill and I look at probability versus value, uh, I would put it on Marvin Lewis, plus 1400 oh, And then I would buy you dinner. Oh, I mean, yeah, then I absolutely, then please do that. Do that, do that right now. Don't think, just do it. But with that being said, like, listen, though, you're, you're, you're the guy that's always telling me this is the hottest coaching job in the NFL. It is. Like, but do you think Marvin Lewis is really one of the hottest coaches to get? Like, to me, if you don't get Urban Meyer, isn't Biennemi the next logical choice? Yeah, he is. Yeah, it's a fair point. Um, by the way, I was talking to a guy last week, okay? I'm talking yeah. to somebody on the phone. And that person, I'm not going to tell you who it is. That person had to hang up the phone because Eric Biennemi was calling them. No way. <laughs> yeah, how about that? Fun little story. Hey, that, that's, you can't keep telling me who it is out there. 
Yeah, I'll tell you. All right, cool. Check this out too. Guess what? I got an invite. I think it's tomorrow or the next day to a Detroit Lions private meeting to talk about their future, their franchise. Really? Do it. Do we broadcast during the show? <laughs> yes. Go in. I'm okay. You gotta go in that. Okay. I want more. I want details. Fred, I was there for like four weeks. So what? <laughs> what hey, you're a stockholder. <laughs> we'll be back on ESPN 690. ESPN 690 Sports Center Update. Happy Tuesday. I'm Jake Mitchell. The entire NFL has lots of job openings after a Monday full of cuts. Everybody from Anthony Lynn at the Chargers, Adam Gates from the Jets, even John Elway is going to be micromanaged from here on out. Here in Duval, Doug Marone has been let go. Shad Khan believes, though, the job openings here will draw the top candidates. I certainly think there's a huge amount of interest, uh, you know, in this, uh, much more so than the last time around. You know, certainly we have a lot of salary cap uh, available along with the draft picks and um, obviously the number one pick. Jags have requested to interview San Francisco's defensive coordinator Robert Sala and the biggest name linked to the job so far has been Urban Meyer. NFL rules state that the Jacksonville Jaguars must go through an extensive interview process. Sports Center update is brought to you by Morgan & Morgan. Morgan & Morgan for the people. This is Greeny. I'll tell you who Kyler Murray. People are going to compare him to Michael Vick. He doesn't look anything like Michael Vick to me. People are going to compare him to Lamar Jackson. He doesn't look anything like Lamar Jackson to me. You know who he looks like? If Barry Sanders was a quarterback, he'd have been Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray runs like Barry Sanders. You watch him run, and he's a great quarterback. He's a great thrower of the football. He's the closest thing to Steve Young. That, that's the best analogy to it. Greeny, weekdays at noon Eastern on ESPN Radio, your smart speaker, and on the ESPN app. Hi, it's Phil with the Phil Aiken Home Team at Keller Williams. When it comes time to sell your home, put me and the Aiken Home Team to work for you. Here's why. Over the years, I've perfected the home selling system, putting the most money possible in your pocket. With my exclusive list of buyers in waiting, I may already have your buyer. And with thousands of buyers, I'm likely to create more demand and higher sales prices. I'll even guarantee to sell your home at a price agreeable to you or I'll buy it myself. Don't just take it from me. Let me introduce actual clients, Lynn and Craig. Tell us about your home selling experience. We were immediately at ease. We had a great deal of confidence that any questions we had or uh, anything that we needed to learn about the process was going to be handled in an expert and professional way. We sold our home in just two days for $3,500 more than list price. Anyone who wants to sell needs to call Phil Aiken Home Team. Thanks for sharing. The number to call is 904 500 Phil. That's 904-500-7445. Or visit philhasthebuyers.com. Boss, boss, have you heard the latest about the ding-dong doorbell cameras? What, more employees spying on customers? Nope. Hackers again? No, boss, this time they had to recall over 350,000 video doorbells. Recall? What happened? A bunch of them caught fire. Whoa, unbelievable. It's one thing after another with them. Yeah. Notice you never hear that with Safe Touch's video cameras. Well, now you're just comparing a Bentley with a bumper car. Exactly. I just don't understand why any homeowner wouldn't go with Safe Touch. Yeah, their video monitoring's virtually hack proof. Oh, and here's a bonus Safe Touch cameras don't burst into flames. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> yeah, it's just a good thing not everyone knows about Safe Touch, because we gotta stick to the Crooks or Us Golden Rule stay, stay away, away from, from Safe, Safe Touch, Touch houses. houses. Yeah, don't gotta tell me twice. Crooks know to stay away from Safe Touch houses. Hi, I'm Lester Jackson, president of Safe Touch Security Systems. No one beats our technology or our price. Call Safe Touch today at 888-723-8682 or go to safetouch.com. State license number EF233. Nothing is certain except death and taxes. And your appliance is breaking down as soon as they're out of warranty. At Atlantic Coast Appliance, we can't help with the first two, but we've got the third one covered. Our factory trained and certified technicians have been repairing appliances for more than 35 years with a 90 day warranty on parts and labor and a 100% satisfaction guarantee for quality repair at a price that's fair. Trust Atlantic Coast Appliance, AtlanticCoastAppliance.com. That's AtlanticCoastAppliance.com. If you love golf, you need to get this deal. Eight rounds of golf for less than 12 bucks per round plus card fees with the Dream 18 Golf Card at great area golf courses like Queens Harbor Yacht and Country Club, Fleming Island Golf Club, and six others. And this isn't just a golf card. Get a free shirt from Baker Sports, a free hat at Dome Hats, and a free smoothie from Smoothie King, plus 15% off any purchase at Palm Beach Autographs. Go to ESPN690.com to purchase the Dream 18 Card for $95, hundreds of dollars in savings, and the perfect gift. 
Do you know that there are seven steps that can help to ensure a lifetime of success for your child or grandchild, even though they may have trouble controlling their anger or lack of focus or respect for others? Karate America takes pride in the tens of thousands of children they've impacted. Imagine your child or grandchild showing and earning respect, setting and achieving goals, and making good grades. Visit KarateAmerica.info to see if Karate America's leadership program is a good fit for your child. Welcome to Jacksonville's Frisch Family Holocaust Memorial Gallery. It's a free educational resource with rotating exhibits. It's so important we remember. Jewish Family and Community Services, here for remembrance, here for Jax. Learn more at hereforjax.com. The hardest part of any goal is oftentimes getting started. All month long, we're going to help you get started on the path for a happier you. For free, to hear from our experts and check out upcoming shows from personal health to your home's health, visit getstartedjax.com. For the ones who know that a little late is always too late. And that the clock doesn't stop just because you're missing a part. Granger offers supplies and solutions for every industry. And our Keep Stock Inventory Management Solutions help ensure you have the right stuff in the right place at exactly the right time. Visit Granger.com slash Keepstock to learn more. Granger, for the ones who get it done. If you're usually listening to ESPN 690 in your car, but your boss has you working from home this week, well, take us with you. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Austin Lane from ESPN 690 and Action Sports. Jax, tell Amazon Echo or Google Home, play ESPN 690, and enjoy all that sweet listening coverage. I fully expect the bowl championship series to, or the football uh, series here to expand. We'd love for that to include Jacksonville. I know there are a lot of things going on locally here that may enhance that opportunity, but certainly uh, we'd like to move up in the process and be able to to be the destination for uh, future big-time games. Um, We're already placed to where you have the SEC and the ACC facing off, and even though this was an unusual year, you saw the competitive nature of the game here uh, last weekend. So uh, certainly we want to advance the game as best we can, move forward, and certainly uh, that takes a local effort to get that done, but certainly the upside is tremendous. That is Greg McGarrity. I think it's a great move today by the Taxlayer Gator Bowl. He becomes the president and CEO, taking over for Rick Catlett. McGarrity is a familiar name. He's been the athletic director and just retired at the University of Georgia. So uh, he's moved into the area. He knows the area. Obviously, he was at Florida as well. So he, he helped uh, keep the Georgia-Florida game here. I'll say Georgia-Florida in this instance because <laughs> we're talking about McGarrity. And, uh, you know, not, I shouldn't say help keep it here, but obviously he was involved in those negotiations, was a believer in it here. And now he gets to be in charge of the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl and – I guess there's still visions of maybe getting one of those college football playoff games someday, especially if it expands in Jacksonville. We'll see, and I think a lot of that will depend on Lot J and Stadium. And, and But that dream isn't dead, I think, downtown for a lot of folks in the college football world. I think it's a great play um, by the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl and having McGarrity involved. I think he really understands this market. And I don't know where bowl games are going. I, I don't have a lot of faith in bowl games. Uh, I think this year, unfortunately, and I, I hate to say it because I'm a big believer in local sports, I just I, I don't even think many people kind of realize that game was going on, uh, unfortunately, in town. I think some of it because a lot of the activities before the bowl game um, didn't matter. I think because of the Trevor Lawrence and the Jags coaching changes and all those other things, it got buried. Mm-hmm. But it was a noontime game on Saturday. It was a pretty good game, 23-21, Kentucky over NC State. And I, they have to raise the profile of that game more if anybody can do it. I think McGarrity's the right guy to do it. So uh, pretty interesting. Uh, Brett Martin, Austin Lane, just got a couple minutes before the break. Then we're get right back into all this uh, NFL talk and uh, also the Jag search and, and the latest on that as names continue to surface. Uh, Austin, do you check out? I got a little tribute going behind me today here at home let me pull up the video real quick oh hall of fame step i assume right? very good nice. hall of fame step that's repping right it, repping it do, do you have like a frame like i don't know like a sh- work shirt that you have up there too to put on for your 
No. Side or not? Nothing. I, I have uh, Steph framed my uh, college jersey. Nice. There we go. Yeah, I wasn't going to put that. I felt that might have been a little kind of too much. You know, like, put my own jersey right behind me. It would have been pretty aggressive. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, maybe. But hey, here's the problem. <laughs> here's the problem. I got a Minshew, right? <laughs> yeah. Which is actually for Kaylee, but I stole it to put it down here okay. when I was doing all the stuff from home. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, it doesn't feel good putting that behind right now. And over there on that wall, I don't. I don't even. Th- I should just do it for posterity's sakes. Yeah. I got a Blake Bortles one over there. Oof, Brent. <laughs> hey, by the way, investing man. It's the mustard jersey. <laughs> Brent, did, did did you actually pay like real no. U.S. presidential pictures for? Okay, I was gonna say it. No. For that um, mustard, come on, man. I but, did. But I it's did. like, but I had it. So see, what was I supposed to do with it? I got it free. I mean, I had to do it. But it's so bad. Like I'm talking about the jersey. Uh, the fact that it's it's almost great, right? It's, it's like might, a piece of pop culture. It is. It yeah. is. I, I might put that one behind me if I'm back here tomorrow. Uh, that I should be like in the NFL Hall of Fame one day. <laughs> it should. Uh, I like Blake. Carson Wentz didn't talk to the media. Blake Bortles would have talked to the media. <laughs> we'll be back an hour to go. I'm Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. We should always be looking at our finances, but 2020 made my family take an even closer look, a bit more of a deeper dive, and it might have done the same for you, even into the world of retirement. Although that's a bit down the road for me, it might be closer for you, and your plan should already be under a microscope, and you have to lean on the experts to help guide the right plan. My friend Mike Lester with Talent Wealth Management is the perfect partner. He will provide a complimentary analysis and a plan for you. Call him at 904-515-5000. Or visit guardingyournestegg.com. That's 904-515-5000 or guardingyournestegg.com. Mike will give you the guidance you need as retirement gets closer. He can help you convert company plans to private plans, a move that might give you higher returns and more options. You've earned the money. Now make sure you are ready for whenever retirement will be. Call Mike Lester at Talon Wealth Management, 904-515-5000. That's 904-515-5000. Or visit guardingyournestegg.com. Hi, it's Brian Kilmeade for Phil Aiken Home Team Keller Williams Realty. I'm talking with Greg and Gary about their recent home home sale. Why did you call Phil Aiken? We called Phil Aiken because we had heard that his team will sell your house quickly and for more money than any of the other realtors in town. Tell us what happened. Phil Aiken and his A-team, they will make the process very easy. Sold in four days and got over asking price. Well, that's great. So how did you think they were able to sell it so fast? Because Phil has the buyers and they have the team that can get the job done quickly and stress-free. What would you tell a friend who is looking for a real estate agent to sell their home. Would I recommend Phil Aiken and the A-Team? Absolutely. Well, the results speak for themselves, right? Phil Aiken and his team have the systems and will even guarantee to sell your home in writing or buy it himself. Yes, we got better results than we expected. Thanks, Gary. Friends, hire the agent with the buyers looking to buy a home right now. Call Phil Aiken. Call 500-PHIL. That's 500-PHIL or visit philhasthebuyers.com. College football, it's the game you wake up early on Saturdays for, even though kickoff isn't until 7. The game where the Goodyear blimp becomes a Hall of Famer. The game that goes just beyond school, spirit, fandom, or love of the sport. It's the game where the comebacks happen. It's the game where anything can and will happen, as long as you have the drive. Because college football is the game that moves you. We get it because it moves us too. Goodyear, more driven. It's time for some straight talk. Look, we all drop our phones. It happens. You fumble it, crack it, splash it. Well, Straight Talk Wireless now offers this new Platinum Unlimited plan that includes phone protection. Just 65 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, and data, plus 20 gigs of hotspot, 100 gigs of cloud storage, and more. All on the best network. Straight Talk Wireless, no contract, no compromise. See Mobile Protect terms and conditions at assurion.com slash straight talk. Limitations and exclusions apply. If you love golf, you need to get this deal. Eight rounds of golf for less than 12 bucks a round, plus card fees with the Dream 18 Golf Card. At great area golf courses like the Golf Club at Southampton, the Club at Osprey Cove, and Hidden Hills Golf Club. And this isn't just a golf cart. Get a free shirt from Baker Sports, a free hat at Dome Hats, and a free smoothie from Smoothie King, plus 15% off any purchase at Palm Beach Autographs. Go to ESPN690.com to purchase the Dream 18 Card for just $95. Hundreds of dollars in savings and the perfect gift. 
Did you know that you have the power to positively impact a local child's life? It's as easy as donating to Daniel, Florida's oldest child service agency. Daniel provides counseling to abused children. Daniel helps homeless teens find shelter and learn to live independently. Daniel connects kids with foster families and strengthens at-risk families so they can stay together. They've done all this and more for 135 years. Please become a part of improving the lives of local children and families by donating at danielkids.org today. Many of us have been fortunate to have someone along the way take an interest in our career or another aspect of our life. To a small business owner, it is important to have an objective voice to provide advice or guidance to help identify customers, answer a legal question, or review finances. As the nation's premier organization supporting small businesses, SCORE is always looking for people willing to offer their time and expertise to mentor current or aspiring entrepreneurs. If you're interested in joining our team, go to the volunteer tab at jacksonville.score.org and start sharing your knowledge today. Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 Anna Jar and Levine Studios. Anna Jar and Levine Accident Attorneys. Call 904 600 4000. That's 904 600 4000. ESPN 690. Jacksonville's home for ESPN Radio. WOKV Jacksonville. Listen live everywhere you go on ESPN690.com. ESPN 690, a Cox Media Group station. Hey, everyone, this is Brent Morton from Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. Hope you catch the show Monday through Friday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. on 10 different platforms. But if you missed the show today, you missed this. But are the Buffalo Bills for real? I think they are. I mean, I've been a big uh, Josh Allen supporter. I think. I mean, he... how about his start? Oh, yeah. I, hey, I'm not surprised. I guess Jalen Ramsey wasn't right about him being <laughs> trash. <laughs> Subscribe to the podcast and check the show out on Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. Get the podcast daily. All you have to do is search ESPN 690 your podcast app. I'm Christine Lisi. Here's what's happening. Five days before the Browns play their first playoff game since 2003, they found out they will not have coach Kevin Stefanski on the sideline against the Steelers Sunday. He, two assistants, two players tested positive for COVID-19 and will miss the game. With Stefanski out, there are two keys for Cleveland to have a chance to win Sunday, says ESPN's Jeff Saturday. The one thing you got to do is, if you're the Browns, is run the football, right? Go back to run the ball because Stefanski and Mayfield, uh, Stefanski has brought the best out of him, but you're going to have to run it. And then I would flip it over and say defensively, you're going to have to pressure Ben Roethlisberger. Look, at, at the end of the day, you're going to have to make him uncomfortable. Special teams coordinator Mike Prefer will serve as acting head coach. Washington coach Ron Rivera says he's mulling rotating quarterbacks Alex Smith and Taylor Heineke for Saturday's playoff game against the Buccaneers. Smith still dealing with a strained calf, which limited his mobility in the win over the Eagles. A reminder, you can watch the live announcement of the Heisman Trophy winner tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN Radio, ESPN TV, and the ESPN app. Any time of the day is Baconator time. Baconate in the a.m. with the Wendy's Breakfast Baconator. Yep, all the bacon you crave with a fresh cracked egg. Try one this a.m. free with any breakfast purchase offer in the app. There's never been a better reason to bring on the bacon. Always be Baconating. Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 and Jar and Levine Studios. This is Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690 with Brent Martineau and Austin Lane. I don't think we need Urban Myers here in Jacksonville. When he was with Florida, he quit. When he was with Ohio State, he quit. So what's make it, what's going to make him not quit when he's with Jacksonville when he doesn't get his way? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> hey, what? I mean, I, I don't want to label anybody right now. But that guy had to be an SEC fan. That's all I'm going to say. Just going to put it like that. All due respect, he was an SEC fan. You got to love when they come in with the Urban Myers. Yeah. What was that? Another person that called in the show, who was leaving a message? They're out in full force, man. You mentioned Urban Meyer, and he's, he's quite the draw. Hey, would you rather have a coach that is polarizing, or boring. I don't think we need Urban Myers. That I mean, that guy has swore at the television in front of his family before <laughs> when when Florida didn't cover the spread. Simple as that. <laughs> that and, and you know what? The, the, those are even odds right there. That, that's I guarantee that's happened. Sorry. What? What now, Brent? Would you rather have a coach that is 
boring yeah in terms of like the appeal of the hire so what i'm getting at is maybe it's like jim caldwell and, yeah. and let's be honest, with all due respect to jim he's probably the greatest guy in the world but kind of a boring hire right mm-hmm. or would you have, rather having the p- polarizing hire that like, all right well people are going to say that about urban meyer some people aren't going to like the idea of urban meyer i've talked to many people that don't like the idea of urban meyer and then i've talked to quite a few people like bring it on baby so yeah. what, do you, what do you i mean so you, does, you, does it matter to you i guess if you're shod that uh, this guy's going to be a little salty with some no it you know it doesn't matter to me if i'm shod because at the end of the day like you have to win football games that's the most important thing and if you feel that urban meyer can do that then you go with that like your reputation right now and this is how sports work in terms of a franchise owner of the jaguars is how many games you're gonna win okay so, yes, there's, there could be some bad optics of was Urban Meyer the right guy? You know, we saw what happened at Florida and Ohio, all that stuff. I get that. But if you're Shad Khan, you're worried about winning over everything else. I think if I'm a player in the locker room, that answer could be different. Because now usually the way it works is regardless of who the coach is, you know, there's there's the, how the media portrays the coach and there's the press conference and then, you know, there's the players. So it's always kind of a separate thing. But – if it gets to the point where it's like Hollywood status and like the first day back, um, you know, in training camp and we're all there asking questions, it's like, Hey, urban Meyer talks about urban Meyer. Like that can kind of wear thin um, from a player's perspective after a while, right? Like if, if, it, if it's, if it keeps being the main storyline and not about the team, but it's just about the head coach and the hiring of the head coach that can get played out. Yeah. Um, I wonder, like, I, I think initially, Here's what's interesting. I think I read something today. It's like, well, if he has like a uh, – I think it was Gene Fournette. He talked to somebody, and I think it was a tweet where it said something like, if he has the start that like Matt Rule has had. And what's Rule got, like four wins? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. And so he says that. It's like, well, that could be bad. And so what's interesting in that con- in that kind of dialogue is oh, – okay, no, I'm sorry, Brett. Uh, Matt Rule had five wins this year. Five wins? Okay. Yep. But, uh, same, same, same thing. Same, about yeah, the same. Yeah. So – Basically, I don't think there was much of an improvement from last year for Carolina. Is, sure, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, of course, they had excuse McCaffrey was out most of the year. They changed quarterbacks. But they did bring in, listen, Teddy Bridgewater better than Cam Newton, quite frankly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I think from that viewpoint, it would be very – it's interesting. It's like polarizing. Okay, I wanted him. I don't like him. He's going to leave. I don't know what's going to happen with Urban. You know, but when the games start going and the season gets here – it's like how much do you have to win initially for Urban Meyer to deem it, okay, this is going in the right direction? Because this guy has won so much that if he was the guy, you almost think, okay, this guy's going to get eight, nine, ten wins. Like, it's Urban Meyer. He automatically wins. Like, it's automatic. Yeah. <laughs> That's not the way the NFL works. The yeah. Jags are a one-win team. Like, if the Jags go to six wins next year – that doesn't feel great being six and ten, but that is a vast improvement, mm-hmm. especially with a rookie quarterback that you're going to have. So, that's what's interesting to watch. Like, where is the threshold of satisfying, I guess, to a fan base if really any coach is hired, but especially a guy that will be viewed as polarizing. Some people are in, some people are out on Urban Meyer. Well, and it's an interesting standpoint too because. With Urban Meyer, you know, he's a lot of things, but one of those things is the fact that he hasn't really lost, and if he has lost, obviously, you know, we, we've seen the results of that. Like, he, he, he can't take losing. And if you want to talk about distractions in a locker room and, and making it about the coach, not to say Meyer would make it about himself if he was to lose games, but, like, we in the media, you know, I mean, I'm sure one of the very first questions, if this team's sitting, you know, four and, you know, eight or four and nine or four and ten is, hey, you know, you, you haven't lost as many games. Like, what's going through your head right now? Like, I mean, that's, that is going to be a storyline if this team doesn't succeed with Urban Meyer right away. And while he may have seen that coming, prepare for that, I think the fact that, once again, that locker room is going to be in tune with that as well, that could be a different dynamic. All right, so I found something else, okay, as I research head coaches and you go through this, and something stuck out to me the other day. And Urban Meyer is interesting, right, because some people are like, I don't like that guy. He's a bad guy. He's this guy. Okay, fair enough. I don't know. I don't know Urban Meyer well enough to know if he's a good guy or not. No idea. 
I feel like Doug Marone leaves this job as people appreciate him, say he's a good guy, have a beer with him, no problem. He was good to the media. He was all that stuff that everybody says. I mean, but do we really know who Doug Marone is? I don't know. I mean, I don't think we were ever peeled the curtain back on Doug Marone, quite frankly. Uh, Gus Bradley, again, once again, the Gus Bradley we know, salt of the earth kind of guy, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Jack Del Rio, I think – I think there were some people that probably didn't love Jack, uh, but I think a lot of people do like Jack. I think Mike Malarkey, same thing. Nice guy, still lives in, in Jacksonville area. I don't think anybody's going to say he's a jerk. Maybe they will. I mean, maybe people have different experiences. But what I'm getting at here is I found this because I was thinking of, like, Jim Caldwell. And then people throw out the name, like, Tony Dungy. And it got me thinking. I'm like, go to the Indianapolis Colts for a minute. And the Colts have an owner that, how do you think people would classify Ursay? I mean, Brent, what, what do you want me to say about the guy? All right. You remember when he tweeted that whole video where he's standing behind the bench with like 315 uh, on it and he doesn't lift it? He's just like trying to hype people up. Like, the guy's a strange cat. He's got a history. Probably not the best guy to work for. I'll be honest with you. Okay. So. I would say because he's also had what? He had the DUI, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Uh, Yeah, and it was the uh, prescription pills. Yeah, and he comes across as, uh, let's just say, I don't have a a super positive connotation about Mm Ursay. Now, at the same time, he seems very relatable to fans. I mean, you talk about a guy that doesn't feel like he's heavily involved in, like, transactions and and every move that's made. He lets his people do his thing, but he also relates to the fans, and he's kind of hands-on. He's giving away tickets on Twitter, and he's talking to fans on Twitter. And so there's, like, this interesting dynamic with Ursay. Well, but overall, I would say if you had to characterize him one way or another, I'd say he's probably kind of, like, he's probably not the greatest guy in the world, like, I would say. I I don't know him, but I'm just going to say that. Mm -hmm. Uh uh, I know this. He's super. He's super paranoid guy because when there was Peyton Manning's team and they were playing, the like the opposing media, they would have a security guard. Like when we were down on the field, they would have a security guard that was assigned to us. Like if I went to the bathroom, the security guard came with us. You better believe That's it. That's how paranoid they were in Indianapolis. You better believe it. Do your due diligence. Okay. Pump but I that s- crowd noise. But this is interesting, and I don't know if it even matters. The. If you look at Tony Dungy, if you look at Jim Caldwell, if you look at Frank Reich now, who am I missing? Who's the defensive coordinator now with Chicago, had cancer? Um, in Chicago, I can't. Oh, uh, I, I um, ah, uh, Chuck Pagano. Pagano, Oof. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. good. Yeah. Oof. Uh, beat the deadline. It's a rough one, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to give you those four guys, right? Dungy, Caldwell, Pagano, and now Reich. Okay. Isn't it wild that if you ask people, I think though, I think most people would be like, those are the four nicest people on the planet. Yeah, very, very stand-up individuals, I would say. Is there anything there? Is there anything to hiring that kind of guy to lead your organization? And even though <laughs> what's interesting is you don't get that feel from the owner necessarily. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. So is that to kind of offset that owner, or is that just who he thinks needs to be a leader of their football team and (sighs) program? And by the way, I think some of the things that – like I don't necessarily agree with Polian on that front. I think maybe that – like a Dungy could offset the Ursay Polian, and then you bring in this super genuine salt-of-the-earth A-list guy in Dungy. But I think now, like, their GM, Ballard, is supposed to be a really good guy, and, I mean, we don't hear anything negative about him, and I think he's one of those. But but isn't it interesting that Indianapolis has kind of aligned their coaches over the last 20-something years? And if I had to characterize those guys, I'd be like, those guys are damn good men. You, you know what? It, I absolutely understand what you're saying, but I want to come at it from a different angle. So you just brought up four great examples of guys who are very well-spoken um, in the media, right? I mean, obviously we see Tony Dungy on TV all the time. Sometimes he offers a, a little pull behind the curtain. Sometimes he offers inspiration, but he's good at what he does. I think, is he with NBC, Brent? or what is uh, He's an NBC guy. NBC yeah. guy, yeah, yeah. And then obviously with, with Chuck Pagano, um, you know, he's eloquent, well-spoken. Not so much, I mean, not so much like I think he wanted to be. I think the fact that he was kind of cast in that role after all that he's been through, right? Like people wanted to talk to him. People wanted to hear his story. 
and he shared it. So, like, that's how we know Chuck Pagano. Now, now Frank Reich is a little different to me just because I don't know um, a lot about him. I haven't seen a lot of interviews with him. So I'm kind of just, you know, putting him in the group. And then, obviously, w- with Caldwell, I mean, we know what he's about as well, a pretty well-spoken individual. The point that I'm trying to make is, is that I think that there's a lot of great spoken individuals out there. I think they're a little more rare in terms of the NFL. Now, when I say well-spoken and, and eloquent, there's two types of, of, uh, of categories here, right? There's when you cross the white lines on a football field, and then there's when you come off that football field and you get in front of a podium, uh, and it's your demeanor, if you will, right? And the point that I'm trying to make here is that when you cross those white lines, those, it seems like well mannered individuals, those well spoken, eloquent, seems like salt letters kind of guys. When when they cross the white lines, they have a job to do, and that job sometimes entails yelling at people, maybe chewing somebody out. Like, I, I've never really met a coach. Maybe Tony Dungy's an exception, yeah. but like, but but like even Andy Reid would be. He comes across obviously as a as a salt letters kind of guy, right? A laid back guy. But I've seen Andy Reid laying to people before. Right, like worse than I've ever seen other coaches do it. So I think it's the fact that every coach, when he's on the field, he's going to get the most out of his players. And if that includes chewing you out, then so be it. He's going to chew you out. Now, some might use different kind of verbiage. Let's just say, and if you've been <laughs> to a Jaguars training camp, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But at the end of the day, it's the ones that are eloquent in their press conferences that, that come across as the good dudes that we put on a higher pedestal and say, "Oh, I'm sure they're a great guy on the field as well." And I'm here to tell you. They might be a great guy, but don't get it twisted. They're still yelling. They're still they're they're still chewing people out. Yeah, I, and I agree with that too. I, I think one of the misnomers around here is like I, I I laugh at it because it's like Gus Bradley was such a nice guy that he never held anybody accountable. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the funny narrative yeah. where like I've heard like stories of. Gus Bradley laying into people I'm and get- finding the heck out of people, like so- how much money they find people in a year. And now it might not be on a Coughlin level, yeah. but it was significant. And so it's just like you're right about that persona. It's like nice guy, so he must be always nice. No, I think Frank Wright can be a bulldog when he needs to be a bulldog. Yeah. That's, that's, that's not it. I just feel like, though, it's interesting, Austin, that in Indianapolis – and maybe there's more examples of this, but I think Indianapolis, Indianapolis over four different hires now has had a guy that from a perception standpoint, again, I don't know these people, yeah. but I would say if you ask 10 people on the street, nine of them would say, damn good man, damn good man. You know, I don't, I don't know if that's important, but it seems like it's important to Ursay in the hiring process. <laughs> yeah, so, so listen, man, that just reminded me of a really great Gus Bradley story that kind of pertains to what we're talking about right now. And I don't think I'm really, like, you know, peeling back the curtain too much where I shouldn't be saying this, but it, it, it's a great story and it's a great example. Brent, from the outside looking in, you'd say Gus Bradley, like like we said, salt of the earth guy, would give you the shirt off his back. Um, you know, just an all around great dude. You definitely want to have a beer with him. Would you agree to all those things? No doubt, without a doubt. And I remember the first time that I met Gus Bradley, that he came to talk to our team, and he gave this eloquent speech. Man, like I was fired up. I was ready to run through a wall. Almost like this is the guy. Like we're gonna be something special. Now I was cut a couple weeks later, but that's either neither here nor there. But with that being said, like I had the preconceived notion of Gus Bradley even after one meeting seeing his energy the way that he talked to us I'm gonna be like this is gonna be like kind of like, like, like a kumbaya thing like we could be doing trust falls like who knows what's gonna happen but like <laughs> this is a good thing you know coming from coming from Mike Malarkey and Jack Del Rio who are a little more old school I'm like this might be a little cushy this is gonna be good stuff all right so let's go ahead and fast forward a week later right because that was during like kind of like the OT that was kind of like during like the, the preseason part not everyone's at the stadium quite yet so now we're starting the OTAs um we're starting to ramp things up a little bit their very first day of, like, that practice, our very first meeting, we're all geared, ready to go. Gus Bradley comes in. And the first thing he does, and I can't even remember for the life of me who the guy was, right? He, was, he might have been a practice squad guy. Whoever the guy was, he goes, hey, man, I was reading your story. You got to stand up in front of this team, and you got to tell them your story. And I'm like, all right. So the, the, the guy stands up, you know, and he, he's a first-year guy, rookie, a little nervous. And he starts to go on about his story, about how when he was growing up, you know, he's in a rough part of the neighborhood and things like that. Um, dad wasn't there, you know, had a house of like six or seven people in like one apartment. Just, you know, his inspirational story. So this guy, so this player, this rookie, is spilling his soul to the entire team. And as he's talking, Gus Bradley stands up and goes, ah! 
nobody cares about your sob story sit down we got games to win and like he said that and i'm like whoa whoa wait a second like who is this the, guy yeah the, 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 this dude's bearing his soul now all of a sudden what, what, what we're not doing kumbaya we're not doing trust balls anymore and then it dawned on me like listen you can be a great guy and and, and you can have fun and you can have the, all this energy but at the end of the day we all have jobs to do and I thought it was an interesting strategy by Gus Bradley because he, he kept reiterating this, and it might have been one of the themes of the entire season, is that nobody cares about your sob story. Nobody cares exactly how you feel right now. If you're not playing a lot, like, earn your playing time. Nobody cares about where you came from. Guess what? We're all in the same spot right now. So let's focus on today. And it, it, was, it was an interesting way to get that point across, but it's an example of, listen, I thought I knew who this coach was, and all of a sudden he stands up while this kid's bearing a soul and goes, no one wants to hear your sob story i was like okay game on let's go yeah that's a great story i'd never heard that and and if you had put five coaches on a wall and say attach this story to that coach gus bradley would be the last one. you never would imagine it would right be the last one it's and, insane and so you know i've always been interested i thought the great dynamic here and i've, I've said this to him many times um and, and i don't even know if i eloquently say it the right way but it stands out to me is tom coughlin is a very good man very Absolutely. good man. Absolutely. Uh, good heart. Obviously, what he's done with the J fund. But beyond that, I think a good, good man. But he is a you-know-what Yeah. when he's in that building. Mm -hmm. He's a you-know-what when he's demanding excellence, when he's on that field, all that stuff. And that's the guy that we think we know, right? Yeah, absolutely. That guy with the scowl on his face and we're going to win lunch and – Get here in OTAs. I don't care if they're voluntary <laughs> or not. But that's the guy that we all associate with Tom Coughlin. So, but w now that we know him a little bit more in the community, all that stuff, yeah, that might be that guy, but he's also this guy. Mm -hmm. And so it's a it's a fascinating look. And so when I came across it, I'm looking at all who has hired who most recently, looking at the division, looking at all this stuff, and it was just striking to me when somebody – because Jim Caldwell was doing some work on him, and then also Tony Dungy's name came up, and I was like, "Wow, wait a minute, that's Indy, that's Indy." And I and I remember uh, Pagano, and 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 I think things changed. I don't know if things were different in terms of the way we perceive Pagano because of the cancer, mm -hmm. um, and I, I just don't know. I, but I believe he's always been viewed as a, a really good dude. And Frank Reich is that, by the way. I mean, Frank Reich is supposedly that guy. Like, there's a reason why like Nick Foles' favorite guy is Frank Reich. You mm -hmm. know. I mean, just good, good man. And so it, I, I, I'm probably over-dramatizing this. I just found it interesting. And I'm not saying we've had bad men here in Jacksonville. I'm not even implying that. I'm not trying to slander anybody. Hmm. What I'm, what's interesting is, let's just say, let's look at the pool of candidates the Jaguars could go to. You could go to Marvin Lewis or a Jim Caldwell or um, we don't really know Smith and Dable, but Salah, who I think is – good foundational guy even though mm -hmm. it can be intense and those are what we would qualify or, or quantify as those are good men sure then we're gonna now talk about and what we have talked about is a guy like urban meyer and we're gonna say oh, that guy's a son of a <laughs> yeah you know what i mean yeah no without and, a doubt and, and so that's isn't that interesting and i don't know what that can mean so it's the way we look at bill belichick right until we saw him in that nfl network special when he's on his boat just hanging out it's it's what we think about nick saban until saban that we see saban the guy like in a meeting today it was like the only thing i remember from that game the other day is saban at halftime and he's like this thing doesn't work yeah, the yeah, mic yeah, doesn't yeah. work you know yeah. well, well we also have seen saban like on the espn set where he's not playing and he's got a ton of personality yeah, yeah you, know? you know you know what Brent? i think if we were to put a whole bowl on this conversation we can ask ourselves like what did we learn from you know the story of gus bradley what did we learn uh from talking about some of these you know old colts coaches it's the fact that listen you can be a great guy off the field you can say all the right things in the press conference heck you can even go on twitter and social media and be super entertaining but what it comes down to more importantly than anything is what type of guy are you what type of coach are you when you cross the white lines you you give me the right guy that can cross the white lines to get the most out of his players and i'll take everything else that comes with him yeah uh, the search uh, continues what uh, kind of man what kind of coach will they get in jacksonville and here's the answer a winning one is hey, what's needed hey all i'm gonna say is the next time you talk to gus bradley tell him that nobody cares about a sob story <laughs> you know
<laughs> I will. All By right, the way, man. Gus uh, seems to be a favorite with uh, John Gruden and, and the uh, Las Vegas Raiders yeah, yeah. as a defensive coordinator. Guy's a good defensive coordinator. Obviously, didn't work out as the head coach. I don't know if he'll get another opportunity down the line, uh, but he, he, I tell you what, people scoop him up in a hurry. Yeah. When his name's available as a defensive coordinator. Well, and we'll I'll tell back. you what, I'm going to start using that with my son a little more, too. My son gets upset. <laughs> no one cares about your sob story. Pick I like up your it. toys and let's go to bed. I, let's I, go. Let's, I love it. Yeah, I let's love get it. it. All right, we'll be back on Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 69. Action Sports Jacks with Brent Martineau on ESPN 690 is brought to you by Best Bet Jacksonville and Orange Park. Now, the first alert forecast on ESPN 690. Plenty of sun this afternoon and temperatures really pretty pleasant. will cool off quickly this evening and overnight under clear skies dropping to near 40. Mostly to partly sunny tomorrow, your Wednesday high 63 and partly sunny and warmer Thursday up to 69. From the First Alert Weather Center, I'm Action News Jack's Chief Meteorologist, Mike Burrish. The Weather Center is brought to you by Beards Diamonds, where you get the lowest diamond price guaranteed or your money back. No matter what you are driving, you can step up to luxury now at any of the Fields Auto Group dealerships in Jacksonville. Cadillac. Jaguar, Land Rover, Lexus, Mercedes-Benz, and Porsche. Yes, it's luxury for less at all Fields Auto Group locations in Jacksonville. Plus, you'll also be part of their exclusive Fields Amenities Program, where you will get complimentary loaners, car washes, and cafes. So whatever you're driving, see Fields first and step up to luxury for less during this amazing opportunity. Visit FieldsAuto.com. For the one standing guard. For the eagle-eyed, for the knights in shining armor, and for all those who support them, we are Granger, your experienced safety partner, offering supplies and solutions for every industry, committed to helping keep your facilities safe and your people safer. Call, click slash safety, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Nothing is certain except death and taxes. And your appliance is breaking down as soon as they're out of warranty. At Atlantic Coast Appliance, we can't help with the first two, but we've got the third one covered. Our factory trained and certified technicians have been repairing appliances for more than 35 years with a 90-day warranty on parts and labor and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. For quality repair at a price that's fair, trust Atlantic Coast Appliance. AtlanticCoastAppliance.com. That's AtlanticCoastAppliance.com. Hi, it's Phil with the Phil Aiken Home Team at Keller Williams. When it comes time to sell your home, put me and the Aiken Home Team to work for you. Here's why. Over the years, I've perfected the home selling system, putting the most money possible in your pocket. With my exclusive list of buyers in waiting, I may already have your buyer. And with thousands of buyers, I'm likely to create more demand and higher sales prices. I'll even guarantee to sell your home at a price agreeable to you or I'll buy it myself. Don't just take it from me. Let me introduce actual clients, Lynn and Craig. Tell us about your home selling experience. We were immediately at ease. We had a great deal of confidence that any questions we had or uh, anything that we needed to learn about the process was going to be handled in an expert and professional way. We sold our home in just two days for $3,500 more than list price. Anyone who wants to sell needs to call Phil Aiken Home Team. Thanks for sharing. The number to call is 904 500 Phil. That's 904-500-7445. Or visit philhasthebuyers.com. Get more in 2021 when you shop Arlington Toyota, like Arlington's 30-day exchange policy. That's 30 days to love your purchase or exchange it. How about a national lifetime warranty with unlimited time and miles? And that comes with your purchase. Plus, with Arlington's Credit for Everyone program, if your Beacon score is from 450 to 850, almost everyone is approved. With 4.7 out of 5 stars and over 11,000 reviews, it's time to get more in 2021 with Arlington Toyota. 10939 Atlantic Boulevard and online at arlingtontoyota.com. It doesn't matter how old we are, we all need love and support. Yet, teenagers who end up in foster care have a much harder time finding it, as nearly 82% of current foster families are home to kids 12 or younger. The good news is, you can positively impact a teen's life by becoming a foster parent with help from Family Support Services of North Florida. You don't have to be married or own a home. You provide patience, love, and understanding, and Family Support Services will offer specialized training, resources, and a community of support. So if you've ever felt a calling to help youth, please take this opportunity to explore becoming a foster parent to a teen through Family Support Services. Teenagers may no longer be little, but they still need lots of love. Take the next step. 
by visiting foster-now.org. That's foster-now.org. Keyshawn Johnson, Jay Williams, and Zubin Mahente. James Harden, if he wanted to get to Brooklyn, could get to Brooklyn. Him, Kyrie, and Kevin Durant. If that happens, they would be the favorite to come out of the East. That could be your NBA Finals next year. The Lakers, LeBron, AD, Dennis Schroeder versus the Brooklyn Nets, Kevin Durant, Kyrie, and James Harden. Keyshawn, Jay Will, and Zubin. Weekday mornings at 6 Eastern on ESPN Radio or streaming live on the ESPN app. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Austin Land of Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. If you didn't catch today's episode, I'm not mad at you, not even disappointed, but check out what you missed. Uh, I got lambasted on social media for a small, mild bit of criticism of Gardner Mitchell. Careful, because okay. you've been in that guy's house, so I, be careful. I get crushed when I say too many positive things, moral victories, and I criticize the QB a little bit because that's what I saw. Check out our podcast on all platforms. Just search ESPN 690. Subscribe to our podcast. Thanks. Austin Lane. And I'm going to regurgitate it to you. I'm like a mother bird right now, and I'm spewing it in your mouth. Brent Martineau. You got doves flying and mother birds all week. I'm I'm trying to baby bird you right now, man. (laughs) Yeah, well, uh, this is why I tease stuff and don't get to it. Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. There's a number of sacrifices that have been made by all the players and coaches in this league. There's a number of sacrifices that come along as well with the family members of the people connected to them. To disrespect the effort that everyone put forward to make this season a success for the National Football League, to disrespect the game by going out there and not competing for 60 minutes and doing everything you can to help those players win, we will never do that as long as I'm the head coach of the New York Giants. So, That is Joe Judge, New York Giants head coach. I don't think we talked about this a lot yesterday. We talked about it briefly. But this is still a story some days later now. Mm Mm-hmm. There's a lot of uh, – <laughs> this kind of goes back to what we were just talking about. See, I think the NFL is made up of a lot of manufactured things at times. <laughs> I don't <laughs> – I think you got to be really careful throwing around the word genuine. Mm-hmm. These guys are smart, you know. Uh, it, not that much different at times than a wrestler given his mic skills. Let's just say that. <laughs> and, like, is Joe Judge – for the New York Giants, saying what he said, because his words, if you listen to everything, he said the buy-in that these people had to make, these these players yeah. this year with their families and with COVID and everything else, it's a, it's a disservice to them to not go out and try to win every game, every time for 60 minutes. And I can't argue with that. I mean, I think he's absolutely right. But is he saying this because, well, he missed out on the playoffs because of that? Is he saying this because it's a rival Philadelphia Eagles and he's going to turn that knife as much as possible because Peterson's feeling it right now? Is he he saying this to, I think somebody said, I think it was Rich Eisen said, he basically said it's a message maybe to the Eagles players who want to come, who might be free agents at some point or, you know, to come play with us and and the New York Giants. Is it a message like, hey, this is the way our organization works, you know? So, I don't know how to consume what Joe Judge said. I think the bigger story here is, because we can debate, have other people done this before, was it really worth, like, tanking the second half for three draft spots? Like, I don't know. Uh, was was this – is Peterson going to write a book someday that said, you know what, the stories of Alex Smith and Ron Rivera were so good, I wanted them to win the NFC East. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Like – I don't know. I mean, give me any conspiracy theory. What I do think, though, is the most interesting part of this conversation is Eagles players and Doug Peterson. So much so that in that town, Austin, I would not be stunned. And I'm not necessarily predicting this, but I'm just saying I wouldn't be stunned that although Peterson is back and has been given that, I think the, the reports were vote of confidence even before that game to come back. That if this stuff gets so toxic with players internally, that the Eagles make a move sometime in the next couple of weeks on Peterson. Yeah, so listen, first of all, with Judge's comments, this is classic gamesmanship coming from Joe Judge right now. Because you could say that the Eagles screwed the Giants over by letting the Giants go to the play, uh, by not letting the Giants go to the playoffs, right? Because you tanked essentially. 
Now, I don't care about that. You know how I feel about it. If you win six games in a season, you don't deserve to go to the playoffs. If you win six games and you're hoping that you're at the mercy of somebody else to help you out to get you in the playoffs, nah, not in my opinion. I don't care. But with that being said, and we talked about this yesterday a little bit, and I alluded to this point, and we're on the same page right now. That locker room, there is going to be problems, right? Because the last thing that an NFL player wants to feel like is a, a pawn, okay? They're, they're grown-ass men who have egos, who have pride, and keep this in mind. The importance of winning has been ingrained in them since they were in Pop Warner, winning over everything. And then you're Doug Peterson, and you come out there and say, hey, Jalen Hurts, go ahead and grab some bench, let's put Sudfeld in, and let's go out there and do that, right? Like... This is only just beginning. This is going to get a lot worse before it gets better. We talked about Jason Kelsey yesterday, said the importance of winning over tanking for that draft pick, the importance of culture and all that stuff. I'm here to tell you right now, and I know Miles Sanders had some comments today. I guarantee there'll be more coming, but this thing is going to fester, and it's going to get worse before it gets better, and I honestly don't know if Doug Peterson is going to be able to overcome what he's about to face in that locker room. Yeah, and I think if, if you're Philly, because things get messy and hurry in Philly now, and they're already a mess. They don't know what the heck's going on with Carson Wentz and Jalen Hurts. They've, they're on the books for Carson Wentz. Is anybody going to take him if you trade him? Um, are you going to play him? And now this, which is even bigger because if you don't have the confidence of your coach or you're ticked off of your coach. And I said it yesterday, we talked about this, like a guy like Malik Jackson, if, and I don't know how he feels about this current situation, but I know Malik Jackson's personality. I've been around Malik Jackson enough where if he does take offense to that, like he's not going to be afraid to share it, mm-hmm. you know? And I, there's probably a lot of guys in Philly like that. So, uh, and, and by the way, when, when Philly went to Hertz, it wasn't, 100% received in the locker room. A lot of Carson Wentz fans and believers in that locker room that even went to Hurts. So, and and then, of course, Wentz wasn't even dressed uh, in, in this game to play Sudfeld. So, the whole thing is I just say, Philly better make a move sooner or later because they're going to get way behind in this kind of cycle. Uh, if, yeah. if, if they don't do something, they got to figure it out and they got to figure it out fast. But I just would not be surprised. Like, it this reminds me of, and, and without all the circumstance, but you remember it was just a few weeks ago, Tom Herman was safe at Texas, and then last week he's gone. It, just because you've been said, it's been said that you're safe doesn't mean you're going to be there. And uh, this could get too messy for Doug Peterson in Philly. Yeah, I just don't understand if you're Doug Peterson, how do you come back from this? Because how do you look every one of your players in the eye um, – you know, during a new season when everybody comes back, you know, that first practice of OTAs or whatever and said, hey, guys, we got a great team. We're going to win. Like, how do you even put winning in a category anymore when you had guys, you know, this year for the last game of the season who have sacrificed their bodies, their health, um, their, their social lives, their family lives in order to play the game of football and try to win and, you know, obviously get the support of the city. How do you look those guys in the eyes after that and just say, hey, guys, it's a new season. Let's go. Like, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I honestly, I don't know how to come back from it. And it's crazy because you're a couple years removed from a Super Bowl, right? Like, there was a point a couple years ago where you were the talk of the town, where, like, nobody could touch you. Right, where you're writing books, talking smack uh, about Doug Marone, do whatever you want to do. Like, everybody thought you were the future. And now the next co- a couple years later – it's not we're not talking about how bad the team was this year with injuries and stuff like that we're talking about one decision that you made in the last game of the season let's that, that, let's be honest for the eagles didn't even matter not good i got something we haven't talked about a lot and now that the jags are in a coaching higher and six other teams are for a head coach and seven teams in all for a gm the rooney rule is talked about on a daily and almost hourly basis and the rooney rule for if folks don't know uh teams have to interview a person of color minority for uh, their vacancies and and now it's two for the head co- two interviews for the head coaching positions um, in the process and the idea is to get more minorities mm-hmm. into coaching and head coaching and because if you look at the numbers the numbers are just off it's a white man's world when it comes to a lot of front office positions obviously ownership and 
certainly uh, head coaches. So the Rooney Rule is in place for that, and it goes back now some couple of decades. I believe it's old now. And it's been adjusted, and there was talk this year that would even adjust more and reward teams for hiring a minority coach. I guess the simple question is this, because the Jags are in the middle of this. There's all this Urban Meyer talk, first of all, and so that's even brought up people saying, well, don't they have to abide by the Rooney Rule, and are these just, if they really do want Urban Meyer, are they even interested in guys that they're mm -hmm. interviewing, like Eric Bieniemy, and, and because he's a black man, are they just interviewing him because of that? Uh, goes to the GM searches as well. I it's an interesting topic to navigate. I guess simply, Austin, I've never really had your take on this because on the show here in Jacksonville, they haven't been hiring mm -hmm. until now. But is it working? Do they need to do more to get minority coaches in the game in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, essentially, to paraphrase, you're asking me, how do I feel about the Rooney rule? <sighs> you know, it's to me, Brent, it's like a double-edged sword. It's like a catch-22. Because a part of me wants to say, well, I like it because, listen, this gives black coaches a chance, right? Like, this this gives more minority coaches a chance to succeed in the NFL, right? It, it almost it kind of evens the playing field a little bit. So that's one side of me. And then the other side wants to go, well, what the hell are we talking about? We're, we're, we're talking about the game of football where it's supposed to be about wins and losses over everything else. And we're talking about coaches out there of any ethnicity that are probably more qualified than some of the white coaches right now. So, like, how how are we even in 2020, right? 2021, excuse me, and we're talking about this rule still? Like, it, it shouldn't be, we shouldn't even be having this discussion. It should be the best possible candidate should get the job, right? And I think there's a lot of black coaches out there that are some best possible candidates. But that's not where we're at right now. Like, we, we've progressed a long way in that society, and I get it. We're making progress, yada, yada, yada. But, like, when this Rooney rule comes into place, I feel like the progress isn't justified quite yet. Now, once again, I go back to the other side. It's all we got right now, okay? And, and it's going to give more coaches an opportunity that are minorities, then so be it. Like, if this is the best we honestly can do right now in 2021 – then it is what it is. Is it perfect? Not even close. But it's really all we got right now. Yeah, and uh, it's interesting to be here in Jacksonville because you have a minority owner. Yeah. So, like, to me, while I understand there's criticism sometimes of are you just doing this because you're just, hire you're just checking a box, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in the process, and while I do think that probably unfortunately has been the case in the past, I just, as it equates to Jacksonville, have a hard time believing – that's the case with a minority owner, you know. Well, um, yeah, so no, without I, a doubt. But I, I, I just, I would, I really have. I, I think the Jags organization should be immune to that kind of conversation, basically because you have a minority owner. But I also think, like Shad Khan even said it yesterday. He, he's aware of it. He he wants to put minorities in a position to be successful. Mm -hmm. He's a big believer in giving minorities opportunities. Uh, and, and that shouldn't have come as a surprise. But he, his task is to get the best person for the job that he thinks is going to win and win big in Jacksonville. That doesn't matter what color you are, what uh, gender you are, whatever. He's got to find the right person. You know? no, no, without a doubt, Brett. You're absolutely right. And that's the way that it should always be for every single team in the NFL. And, you know, you alluded to this as well. Where, And I want to make sure I'm correct when I say this, but if a team was to hire a minority coach in some capacity, then they could get rewarded, right? Like, is it compensation and draft? Or how does that work? Yeah, it was – I forget the exact criteria, but it was something to do with draft picks and maybe an added, like, uh, uh, what are they, compensatory picks? See, and, and to me, like, I understand, once again, you're trying to get the incentive a little more, but that rubs me the wrong way. Yeah. Because now we're saying, hey, man – if you, you take a black coach over there, there's something in it for you. That, that, that's not how we should be thinking about it. Like, I don't mind the Ro Rooney rule right now because it's literally all you have and it's better than nothing. But then don't, like, have the compensation where it's like, well, if you take this guy, we'll make it worth your while. That's that's not how I think our society should be working. Yeah, I agree. And and listen, I, I think the key to having more minority head coaches is to have more minority assistant coaches. Yes. And the root of the problem, because that's where you get your training ground, white, black, 
It doesn't matter. That's where the training ground comes in. That's where you get your experience to become a next head coach and take a next step. But I think the problem is really more about what you've said in the past, Austin. It's this is sometimes a friend's business. Yeah. Right? Yep, and even now, if you read stuff, if you read stuff now on who's going to be the GM and the head coach, and not just in Jacksonville, but other places, like, well, he worked with him here. He went to college with him here. He played with him here. Well, it's like, I understand familiarity, but let's get the best guys for the job. And this is one of the, the things that I cannot stand about the National Football League because the most important thing is supposed to be about wins and losses. But the greatest contradiction is is that sometimes friendships and staying in your comfort zone trump the wins and losses. It makes no sense to me. Yeah, uh, and it's it, it's not fixed, that's for sure. Uh, and we could get two minorities into the head coaching ranks in this cycle with, uh, at least, at least, by the way, but two hot names, Robert Sala and uh, Eric Bieniemy, of course. And it will be a damn shame if Eric Bieniemy doesn't get a head coaching job with six available. Mm -hmm. No doubt. He so uh, yep. we'll see what happens. Uh, more to come. Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. And I do have a, a question that's very important, at least in my house, that I need answered. <laughs> it's on the way. ESPN 690 Sports Center Update. Happy Tuesday. I'm Jake Mitchell. The entire NFL has lots of job openings after a Monday full of cuts. Everybody from Anthony Lynn at the Chargers, Adam Gates from the Jets, even John Elway is going to be micromanaged from here on out. Here in Duval, Doug Marone has been let go. Shot Khan believes, though, the job openings here will draw the top candidates. I certainly think there's a huge amount of interest, uh, you know, in this, uh, much more so than the last time around. You know, certainly we have a lot of salary cap uh, availability along with the draft picks and um, obviously the number one pick. Jags have requested to interview San Francisco's defensive coordinator Robert Sulla, and the biggest name linked to the job so far has been Urban Meyer. NFL rules state that the Jacksonville Jaguars must go through an extensive interview process. Sports Center update is brought to you by Morgan and Morgan. Morgan and Morgan for the people. Dang it, Tom Casey. A customer came up to me the other day to say she found herself saying exactly that. Dang it, Tom Casey. Because she walked into a friend's home with a Florida-rated AC system and could feel the difference. Now, that's a good thing. But this particular customer had mixed feelings about replacing her not-that-old AC. On the one hand, she was excited about being way more comfortable in her own home. No more sticky humidity. Fortunately, she reached out and I offered her upgrade options that gave her the comfort she wanted without replacing her system or costing more than her budget. So if you've been wondering if that whole Florida rated thing I'm always talking about is for real, yeah, it is. And if you're interested in upgrading, now is the perfect time. Because I'll let you in on a little secret. As a premium service provider, I generally don't discount but I'll certainly do a little pencil sharpening during the slow season for customers ready to upgrade to the Griffin Service Experience. If that's you, call me at griffinservice.com. License number 1250697. After a long day, having my dogs greet me at the door with their silly smiles and wagging tails makes me happy. I want to keep that joy with me for years to come. That's why I trust Forever Vets Animal Hospital to keep my pets healthy. Forever Vets was voted 2019's Best Vet in Jacksonville Magazine's Reader's Poll, and it's easy to see why. The affordable wellness plans are tailored to meet all of your pets' changing needs as they grow. Open seven days a week, Forever Vets friendly staff is available to treat you you and your pet with care. They combine extended hours with online booking to allow you to give your pet quality care while accommodating your schedule. Go online to forevervets.com to find which of their nine locations is nearest you. And don't forget their newest location in Bartram Market. Forever Vets Animal Hospital, keeping your pets happy and healthy forever. <coughs> We should always be looking at our finances, but 2020 made my family take an even closer look, a bit more of a deeper dive, and it might have done the same for you, even into the world of retirement. Although that's a bit down the road for me, it might be closer for you, and your plan should already be under a microscope. 
and you have to lean on the experts to help guide the right plan. My friend Mike Lester with Talent Wealth Management is the perfect partner. He will provide a complimentary analysis and a plan for you. Call him at 904-515-5000 or visit guardingyournestegg.com. That's 904-515-5000 or guardingyournestegg.com. Mike will give you the guidance you need as retirement gets closer. He can help you convert company plans to private plans, a move that might give you higher returns and more options. You've earned the money. Now make sure you are ready for whenever retirement will be. Call Mike Lester at Talent Wealth Management, 904-515-5000. That's 904-515-5000. Or visit guardingyournestegg.com. My part-time service in the Army National Guard makes it possible for me to be more for the community I call home. My training helps me at work when I lead by example. My service in the Army National Guard allows me to keep my community and those I care about safe from threats. Learn more about how you too can live and serve part-time close to home by visiting NationalGuard.com. Sponsored by the Florida Army National Guard. Aired by the Florida Association of Broadcasters and this station. Get more in 2021 when you shop Arlington Toyota, like Arlington's 30-day exchange policy. That's 30 days to love your purchase or exchange it. How about a national lifetime warranty with unlimited time and miles? And that comes with your purchase. Plus, with Arlington's Credit for Everyone program, if your Beacon score is from 450 to 850, almost everyone is approved. With 4.7 out of 5 stars and over 11,000 reviews, it's time to get more in 2021 with Arlington Toyota. 10939 Atlantic Boulevard and online at arlingtontoyota.com. Do you have a passion for sales? Are you known for building strong relationships? Do you love to compete and win? CMG Jacksonville is searching for a talented individual to join our family as a media consultant. This position will require a committed person who will forge great relationships with Jacksonville's business leaders and develop profitable campaigns for advertisers. If your talents are a match, email your resume to jacksjobs at cmg.com. That's J-A-X-J-O-B-S at cmg.com or call 245-8732. Keyshawn Johnson, Jay Williams, and Zubin Mahente. I despise analytics. It felt like Kevin Cash lost his ability to feel the game. Keyshawn, Jay, Will, and Zubin. Weekday mornings at 6 Eastern on ESPN Radio or streaming live on the ESPN app. This is Greeny with Mike Greenberg. Major breaking news, Giannis Antetokounmpo not going anywhere. A good day for the NBA. One of the ways the league gets itself in trouble is when all the stars congregate on four teams. When you only have three or four teams that you care about, it makes too much of it seem irrelevant. Keep it spread out. Give me 10 teams I want to see, not just three. Greeny with Mike Greenberg, noon Eastern on ESPN Radio. And now, watch exclusively on ESPN+. Plus. It was a very painful moment in there, hugging both of them. And uh, just tell them how much I love them, how much I appreciate them. And both those guys just laid it on the line tonight. I mean, they absolutely laid it on the line, not just tonight, but, you know, their whole careers. And it's just been an unbelievable journey. I'm just so thankful that I got a chance to coach those guys and be a part of their journey. You know, that both of them have such bright futures and, and a lot of football ahead. I mean, Trevor Lawrence is, is I mean, he's a generational guy. He's going to be a great player for a long, long time, and so is Travis Etienne. And, and just, to, just know, to know that, you know, the good Lord blessed me to, to be a part of their journey. I'm just thankful for that. That is Dabo Swinney, Clemson head coach. You know, there really hasn't been a lot of Clemson guys in the Jags locker room. Yeah. Olivia Tassley did this and because we were asking that question, and so she went back and looked, and I think Andre Branch. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Windmill. Windmill. <laughs> yes, windmill. And uh, uh, who else did she just say? Oh, Tyler Shatley. Ah, uh, okay. Currently there. Sure. Uh, and there also hasn't been a lot of 16s in Jags history. The most famous one, probably the offensive weapon, Denard Robinson. Ah, Mr. Jack of all trades. You know, it's an interesting song bite there from Dabo. You know, he's, you know, sharing his support and everything. And, wishing his players the best luck um you know on their next journey here when he said that he hugged you know them do you think he hugged the defenders at all or just kind of left them to their own devices <laughs> probably just 
left on their own devices, right? Just kind of yeah. turned to like, yeah, I'll see you guys next year. <laughs> we got some uh, work to do. Yeah, we got some work to do. I, I will. Here's what's crossed my mind, and I hope we get the chance at some point to interview Dabble Swinney about Trevor Lawrence. And I, I'm already put the request in, folks. But let's we'll go. See. Um, and I don't know if that will come, or, or somebody maybe will ask this question. Probably, maybe they've already asked this question. I just haven't heard the answer. But my question about Dabo is he was right on and so adamant about the Sean Watson. And Watson had a lot of these holes in his games as he's coming out. And they're like, ah, I don't know. I'll be honest. I wasn't a huge Watson. I was like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I watched him play in the national title game. It was sensational, but I don't know. And, well, he was right about the Sean Watson. Yeah. Right? He mm-hmm. knew that kid. He knew what he was all about. And he knows this guy, too. And so I'm interested. He just said generational guy. I don't think he said that about Watson. So I'm interested to see what he says about Watson in relation to Trevor Lawrence. Because here's a lesson we might have learned. We might want to believe Dabo. <laughs> no, with, without a doubt. And that's going to be, I mean, hopefully we can get that interview. But it would be interesting to ask him, like, hey, so, like, take us through your thoughts about Watson when he was first coming up and, and how you knew and how did those thoughts compare uh, to Trevor Lawrence, you know? Hey, I have a selfish question. i uh, been playing a lot of Miss Pac-Man. <laughs> a lot. Like, like a lot. Okay. And so I'm a boards guy. Like, I go try to get the next board, the next board, the next board in advance. And I'm like, 13 boards is my record right now. Yeah, yeah. So I've made it to their fourth maze mm. and, like, four of them in. Mm-hmm. But then the kids are like, no, I'm playing for points. Like, mm-hmm. and I, I kick them not out of the kids I like that but so i'm like all right fine i'll play for points well now i'm up to like seventy five thousand. yep and so i don't know like do you play for points or for boards because i was always like a boards guy it's it's a great question and i love the way you're talking video games right now to me brent it's good to have you on team video games it's simple brent and this may not apply to your household but if you're playing miss pac-man in a pizzeria or in an arcade the more points you get, what happens? The higher your name is on the end of the game in terms of the rankings. That's a good point. And at the end of the day, the rankings are all that matters because you have the bragging rights. So I'm team points all day, every day. That's a good point. That's a good point. Did, did right. you have that? Do you have the ability to like put your name in and say where you are on the standings? So. No. And I wish you could pause <laughs> you that game. You can't pause it. I want to pause it. No, there's no pausing in arcade right. games. Come on. Hey, live local loud coming up next on ESPN 690. Trevor Lawrence and the Heisman Trophy on ESPN 690 <laughs> in just a bit. Have a good night. Oh, hit the gas. What's going on? You were supposed to check to see if that house had anyone home. Now their porch is on fire. Boss, I didn't do it. The ding-dong doorbell camera just burst into flames and started melting. Oh, so it's true. Those things are fire hazards. Yeah, and now we know another big difference between those cheap ding-dong doorbell cameras and a safe touch security system. Well, yeah, with safe touch, homeowners don't have to worry about their video cameras getting hacked. Or employees spying on customers. Or bursting into flames. Uh-oh. Fire department's coming, boss. Time to go. And I'm way ahead of you. By the way, your eyebrows are completely gone. Oh, well. Maybe it's an improvement. Just so I know you still got your senses, recite the Crooks of Us golden rule again. Stay away from safe touch houses. Don't worry. It's burned into my brain. Crooks, know to stay away from safe touch houses. Hi, I'm Lester Jackson, president of...